Oh. <laughs> yeah. There yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I need a. Everyone, can everyone hear Caven? Hello. I think I think I think it's working. Um. Okay. Not much. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Are pairings off? No. Yeah. Um. How are you doing tonight, Birdseye? Cool. Okay. And where's... Do I have chat, like, popping somewhere? Should be. Should be off. Okay, thank you. Uh, all the way. <laughs> all right. It's... I don't know. Figured out. <laughs> Also, so when I was setting up, uh, I just have a blank slot here. <laughs> I can't figure out how to get rid of it. So, <laughs> no one. <knows. laughs> if Silidar is watching the channel, I'm just gonna say that blank blank slot equals spoiler, and uh, they have to do a spoiler. Ready to lose two and get that foil bear, bro. That's literally exactly what Isaac said. <laughs> uh, had a busy week not participating also interested to see what the meta is going to be yeah it's uh it's going to be an interesting yeti locals for sure um i'll definitely be interested in looking at the winning deck list which alc champion are liking the most hands down Tonaris. like there's no doubt about it i like i'm already yeah I, all of them look amazing um but uh he just he seems to be exactly what i like to do in this game so far what were you going to say? Uh, Tunaris is probably my favorite, but I was going to yeah. say Aria Sana or whatever her name is. Yeah. Is, is my next go-to. It's and, it's definitely interesting when they literally put, like, a difficulty warning next to that champion, basically. Yeah. You know, like, that's like, ooh, that's interesting. Like, you you got you got to spend some time in there for sure. Yeah. Diana sent here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, all of them look cool. Like, it's, it's, it's... I literally was, like, reading that article and just getting so hyped and... Just like so excited that it always just feels like GA is improving. You know, like it always yeah, feels like yeah. there's something to look forward. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm definitely not running that copy, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the whole like day and night theme that they're doing. Um, that's pretty interesting. It's it's wild to see that many B variants of level two, because I I don't understand where all of these are gonna fit into the set. Like is the whole set just gonna be uh champion csrs you know like it's not bad i guess but um that's what we had in first edition and alter uh, and then ftc we got all these ally uh csrs because there's just not as many champions so maybe that's just kind of how they're going to continue to do it is we get allies in event packs and um supplementary sets and like sp1 and stuff like that which is also kind of just a, no it's not really a supplementary set it's a collector set i guess a mini a collector mini set is the best way i would say that um yeah so we might just see like allies getting csrs there and then in our big main sets that happen every other set that's where we get like all the champion csrs kind of makes sense ah yes yep no it's on uh it's on data um yeah if one of the cards is in the probably like that's what they did with the other one yeah. yeah yeah they had different level three champions yeah that's I, cool yeah yeah um i'm almost sure that is how it's going to be because that that's what the csrs are i think yeah. yeah from 20 health to 25 health from level one to level two is interesting yeah i mean like it's it's not that much of a bump from lorraine lorraine level one is 20 health that i remember that now <laughs> thought it was 19 earlier for some reason um and then level two is 24 so it's the same level one starting health and then only one extra health on level two but lorraine is already so much higher than all the other champions so it will be interesting um level three having 30 health is insane uh but yeah it'll be interesting to see how that goes with like the taunt 
mechanic and stuff, you're definitely going to put yourself in the danger zone, I think, quicker than Lorraine. 16 CSRs and first set are going to be mostly champs. Oh, right. They're doing different CSRs for Alter. So those will probably be allies, maybe, I guess. Okay. Interesting. Or uh, more level two. More level two. Okay. That'd be cool. Dude. That would be really <laughs> bad, honestly. That's too many CSRs of the same card. Uh, like, having this no, many no, no, A and like, B. I mean, like, like, I know how they have Mordred and Allen and, like, there's, like, different champs. Oh, like new that. lineage break things? Yeah. That would be insane. Yeah. Because yeah. I think Alter said they are going to add like new cards yeah. not just new csrs and stuff yeah if you have two chaunt if you have two taunts you choose yeah yeah the but opponent, the opponent gets to yes yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 opponents choose yeah uh they definitely will print some alter um they've already like basically committed to it uh but yeah like depends on how much but like alter will always be able to print so if anything they'll just probably do a smaller wave of altar if people get pretty flooded on first edition and then just over time if there's ever if there's ever not enough they can just print more so we're gonna get level one csrs as well or level three in first set alc i think level three will be in first set alc um and i'm sure they're gonna do level one as well It'd be really weird if they gave us level two and level if they gave us two different level twos and not uh a level one or level three. So we have thirty nine players tonight for Yeti. Um same as everything for uh oh right, right. We will have Omnidex up. Yeah. Forgot about that. Uh. <laughs> All right, you know what? He usually posts in pairings. I'll just let. I'll just you let. Do, you do. Oh, thanks. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm Isaac tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's not worth it. I don't even know my Google password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sign in to yours so I can see how you're doing. Yeah. Except it's not working. Yeah. It's whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just use the the pairings announcement the old-fashioned way. Uh yeah, Isaac's going to be playing tonight, by the way. Um uh, Oh, is it just not registering that about yeah. this? Yeah. Um, yeah, so Isaac's, Isaac's gonna be playing tonight, Terry is just, uh, watching tonight. Uh, we're also, so we, we had a in-person locals yesterday, me, Isaac, and Terry, and the other local Lansing people. Um, and then we have this tonight that me and Isaac are playing in, and then tomorrow we have another locals, uh, with a few other people. So, three, three tournaments in a row. I played Win Merlin last night, and, I don't know. Get my hopes up about that deck for sure, but uh, I got Dream Crushed against Water of all things, which is a weird thing to say, but uh, it's exciting to say at the same time. We'll see how tonight goes. Tonight I'm running Fire Ally Aggro because uh, that was what was most voted for in our Discord. Um, I just asked people what they wanted me to play. Yeah, uh, both me and Isaac are playing tonight in pairings. Um, oh, I see. Pairings are up. No, pairings are not up. Um, also, okay, so okay. we are going to do our weekly sticker giveaway for Patreon. So I'm going to change to that. Perfect. All right, so we're going to have uh, three different stickers. Uh, there's an empty slot. Disregard that. If, the, if that wins, we'll just re-roll it again. Um... So our, we're going to do three different winners. Each winner will win one sticker. We'll do the Ace and Squirrel sticker first, the Grail sticker next, and then the True Champion Gaming sticker after that. So this is for our Patreon members for every single tier. Um, if you're even donating as little as $2 a month, um, you get access to this giveaway. So we will roll this right now. So let's start with the Ace and Squirrel sticker. 
And as long as you're in the US, we'll just ship these out to you free of charge. If you're outside of the US, uh, we can try to figure something out. Um, so it looks like G is gonna be winning the ASIN and Squirrel sticker. We'll go ahead and remove and roll for the Grail sticker, the two out of five Grail. And Justin takes that one. All right, congrats, Justin. And then our TCG logo sticker is final up next. Hey, we have Zach. Zach got it. So uh, Zach is one of our locals. That's very funny. Um, I'm going to probably just like stick that on his backpack next time I see him or something like that. Uh, so thank you to our Patreons. It's crazy to see... Uh, how many people are out there supporting us and there's three more than this because i removed them already um so really really awesome there and we as always highly appreciate the support that is not what i want thanks <sighs> all right that was it for oh he just said that again yeah. oh looks like we might be waiting until 705 to start the tournament or 805 for us um might be a small delay just because people are not giving their omnidex id i'm gonna i'm gonna message andy because i think he has mine but okay uh Yeah, so lots of exciting news today for sure. Um, we had all of those set three spoilers. I mean, we saw like over 30 new cards today, I think. Uh, definitely saw some of the hype for set three. We had uh, quite a few orders come in on the website. We do have the starter decks and the uh, in boxes and cases of the new set. Um, everything's up for pre-order. The boxes and cases are priced literally as low as we're allowed to do. And then we're also doing free merch on top of that as well. So um, some really awesome stuff out there. Uh, TrueChampionGaming.com um, should be linked in the description below, I think. Yes. Okay, cool. I so. um, and uh, yeah, so definitely want to check out getting some boxes, uh, some cases. It's going to be a massive set. So um, I think uh, someone said that the statistically, if you pull like perfect, it will take four cases to get a place out of every card from the set, which is insane. So you can you can buy a couple boxes, buy, buy a case if you can afford it rip it all open and, um, you know, like not pull an insane amount of duplicates and feel like you overdid it. Uh, GA definitely will allow you to open up product without feeling like uh, you're just getting duplicates and like you should stop opening. So um, kind of a cool thing about this game. Uh, and uh, yeah, the starter decks are gonna have tons of exclusive cards. So definitely a good idea to get like one of each. Um, you will get enough cards in one starter deck to have a play set of the exclusive cards. So one starter deck would get you four main deck cards of anything exclusive and one material deck card of anything exclusive. And you may want to get multiple starter decks if you want to easily you know, build multiple decks and stuff. If you want to do a wind and a fire uh, Teneris and you need a regalia item that's only in the Teneris starter deck, uh, in each of those you might just want to get two of because um, you do also have a chance to pull those signature rare cards. So. Uh, then we have those exclusive dice in the uh, Cleric starter deck. Um, that's going to be cool too. Very exciting because the DOA starter decks felt a little lackluster. Uh, you had your chance to pull the signatures, which is still amazing. I opened up tons of starter decks for that. But then they all just kind of sat there. You know, I, I, I had all the cards that I needed from those decks already from opening altar. Uh, and it's cool that this time it's like there's a reason to buy the starter decks. You kind of need to, honestly, if you are going to be, um, you know, trying to deck build. Uh, and all that stuff. I can watch the tourney while I'm on nights. Feels good, man. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do it every single week. Gun bullet mechanic gonna be fun. Yeah, I mean, like it really feels like GA is trying to push their creativity um, and their limits with this game. I mean, it's just super cool. Let's see if ah, there is pairings are still not up yet. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, I mean, can't wait. It's going to be insane. 
Um, a lot of people have been waiting for set three to, you know, kind of make some more decisions about this game, see if this game's going to break or make. And I think so far we're, we're seeing GA deliver pretty strongly on set three. Um, I'm personally very, very excited for it. I'm going to be opening up a ton of products uh, and just can't wait. wheel anymore Not in my... oh. okay well that's fine uh don't know if we have a delay on the stream so hopefully i don't get stream site tonight i know there's like a little bit of a delay but we were originally going to do like a five minute delay like something a lot longer just so that um you know People in the tournament could watch my stream, see what's uh, in my hand and stuff. I guess I won't be showing my hand on camera too much, but I do kind of plan on talking strategy out loud to you guys while I'm playing. I have pushed to talk on Discord, so I'll be able to kind of talk to you guys without the opponent hearing and um, do more of like a learn why I'm doing things strategy uh, type stream, which I think a lot of people would uh, appreciate. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe in a more serious match, or uh, if things get down on the wire, I'll have to zone in and concentrate anyways, and my opponent won't be able to tell what's in my hand. Plus, GA seems to be a lot of uh, really, really upscale people. Not uh, not too worried about people stream sniping me. Round one pairings are up. We're going to start at 7.05. Let's see... Oh, right. I'm, I'm in the feature match every single... I'm in the feature match every single time. I don't have to even look for pairings. Oh, that's nice. All right, so... Howdy, howdy. How's it going, mate? All right, looks like we're all set. I... You already streaming? Yeah, uh, just we'll have to get a couple things set up, and then I'm going to have push to talk on, just so I can talk to stream um, out loud without you hearing sometimes. But uh, yeah, so uh, we'll get set up, and it looks like we have like two more minutes to start. Okay, I need to figure out how to get Discord showing. That's not good. How do I get Discord showing? I gotta go get Isaac. Oh no, we're here. Okay. Uh, just do the pop on this. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, um... Cool. Thank you. Uh, good with the uh, high roll? Yep. Got a five. Cool. Sounds good. I'll go first. All right. Uh, where would you like to set? Uh, just half is fine. 
Oh, whoa. Okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, cool. I've got good with you too? All right, good luck. Yeah, as well. All right, so let's draw seven. We are on that Spirit of Fire tonight. Not my particular play style. I am usually on wind, but uh, giving it a go. Should be fine. I think what we'll do here, uh, I have double deflecting, so I'm gonna be able to keep a lot of allies alive. I think we're just gonna really focus on swarming some allies. And trying to just, yeah, flood the board as much as possible. Ah, uh, you're good. Okay. So we go with the Lurking Assailant. Uh, we have Gildas and Flame Rune in hand, but Lurking's going to have stealth no matter what. So it just makes sense to get him out. He's most protected. We can keep a Deflect in hand just in case somehow he gets a huge True Sight attack out, but probably won't have that. Um, as long as we don't level up. Uh, if we just go into a zero cost regalia, we'll have Gildas balanced. So we have six damage coming in already next turn. If we go into something like a ring, we can also then pop after swinging with uh, Gildas and play that flame rune that we have in hand too. So we have a lot of pressure in, in hand um, that he might not know about, uh, might not be able to predict. So might be able to come in swinging pretty strong here. Alright, so we see there. I'll go ring, uh, go to recollection and draw. Bear isn't really something that we want to keep alive, like keep around. We do have a flame sweep in hand, the savage slash two. Um, he probably can't level up and start to swing with bear. If he levels up, he could cleave though with Bissell Frenzy. So that's not really something I want him to be able to do. So I think I might clear this bear. Uh, unfortunately, we'll have to sink four into it because I don't really have a three attack right now. So we're going to go one, two, three. Uh, I'll go Gildas. She's balanced. And then I'll swing into bear. Uh, we'll go Lurking Assailant into you. Okay. I'll have to get life up. Um, we could keep deflecting here, keep something alive, but I think I'm going to go for the board swarm at the moment. Uh, I'm going to pop ring, and then I'll play Flame Rune Swordsman. And we'll swing to it, champion. Okay. And you're all good. Okay. So we have six uh, in memory still. So Gildas should be pretty easy to balance next turn. Uh, I think we actually drew into a Lurking Assailant, so that'll be very easy. Sorry, just making stream set up a little bit more comfortable here. Uh, six in memory, zero in hand. Uh, I'll go ahead and level up. One, two, three, four, five, six. What do you think, chat? Is uh, the water Sylvie... Favorable matchup. I think with how many allies I'm playing, uh, I have a pretty decent board control. So 
I'd say it's probably favorable there. Um, I am a little susceptible to cleaves uh, if I don't draw those deflectings, which this game I do have them. But, uh, you know, obviously, like, this turn, I kind of went all out and uh, left myself a little open. So I think it was that going first, though, kind of gave me that, that, uh, that opening there. I think if I went second this game, I wouldn't have been able to really go for that. I also really haven't piloted Water Sylvie that much myself, so I'm not really sure what its good matchups are. But going off of uh, theory, I'd say that I'm pretty favored here. Uh, we are playing, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, we are playing uh, Ver, Dylan B, um, who is a very good player. Um, that's going to make it a little bit more challenging. Paladin coming down here is going to probably be able to clear our Gildas or our Assailant. They don't get you on the early Frostbind, usually pretty, yeah. Sounds good. They can set up a beefy enough taunt target or can disrupt you. Yeah, taunt taunt could be an issue. So we don't really have to worry about the Gildas map anymore. Um, there's that better beer and with a buff counter. All right, that's a little rough. Sounds good. Thinking on materialization. So, we could hit for three with Savage Slash, have our Deflectings online, have two Floating Memory in drop, getting ready for Flame Sweep. So, I'll go ahead and level up here, uh, one through six. Four. One, four. Got rid of Lurking Assailant. Not necessarily what I wanted to get rid of, but not the worst. Um... But if you're having five, five and four, so Savage Slash can do three, two with Lurking. Um, can clear the Better Beer most likely. Which I might want to just clear the Paladin instead. Uh, probably clear Better Beer. Yeah, we'll go Sword of Seeking. Recollect, draw. That actually changes things quite a lot. So we can clear Bedivere and and Frost from Paladin now. We drew into a um, Blazing Throw. That's pretty pretty significant. So we're gonna go um, Flame Sweep and Creative down, and go Savage Slash. Uh, I'll do Savage Slash with Sword of Seeking into the Bedivere for three. Okay. And then we'll attempt to kill it off with Lurking Assailant. Uh, then yeah, we're gonna go ahead and I'll uh, blazing throw the sort of seeking to kill the frost from Paladin. So now we have a free level up into level two, even though we're low on resources. Uh, and I'll pass. Blazing throw. Uh, how much influence? Uh, three memory, one hand. Also, yeah, you guys probably don't have audio from them. Wonder if I can talk to Isaac about getting that set up after this round. Um, yeah, Pally, Pally bed and buff on bed was really huge, um, but we did clear their board, which I honestly didn't think I was able to do. That that blazing throw top deck was pretty clutch, um, and. You know, honestly, part of the reason to play red. Uh, using that to kill, like, ASINs and stuff early is just insane, and it's a fantastic finisher, too. We have her audio. Okay, perfect. Very good. Um, he looks pretty low on resources. Uh, you didn't use Ordinary Bear in our level one, right? Last bonus. I honestly wasn't really paying attention. Hopefully he didn't. Um, we would have enough for Flame Sweep if we go into level 2 using Floating Memory. So we can Flame Sweep next turn if we need to. 
Um, So that we actually don't really have many options. We really just have Creative Shock. So if he goes two allies, I'll probably do Flame Sweep. If he does less than that, we might just do a setup turn with a Creative and going into some draw or something like that. No Frostworn draw. Ah, ah, with the okay, I get you. Thanks. Excuse Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting you. I'm getting you. Sounds good. So he's gonna go for the kill here. Makes sense. We don't. Hmm. This is tricky. All right. So two in hand, five in memory. Yes. A ton of influence. Um. I don't really think I want to go into the level two yet. I want to build. I want to let him build up a little bit bigger of a board. I think we need to force a huge swing in resources. Uh, otherwise, we might just get slowly whittled out of this game. So I think we're just gonna play slow here and go water bobble. Uh, go water bobble, recollect, and draw. Ooh, so this is actually really nice. I just drew into an Arthur. Um, I can perfectly play it even without Cracking Bobble and just go Immortal for a turn. I'm at zero health, and it's going to really force him to start doing some stuff. And then at that point, we can just do the Flame Sweep turn. So really, my only other option is Creative Shock or like Pop Bobble. I guess we'll. there's not really a harm to Popping Bobble, so we'll go ahead and Pop Bobble. Into a flame rune. Um, that's like you know a solid discard outlet off of creative shock, but we don't really need more. Um, floating memory in the drop. I'm gonna play uh, Arthur. Go on enter unless you have a response. Uh, yeah, you're good. Okay, I'll rest him for immortality, and then I'll pass to you. So there's a few outs uh, that he could have for Arthur, something like Snow Fairy, um, but Snow Fairy is going to still let Arthur have his buff on board, so wouldn't really even be the worst. Um, but again, now we're just putting our opponent in the position of, I can't really do anything to his board, um, and so I'm going to go face. But if I go face, then I'm going to have to put more allies down, and uh, you know he's not sure if I'm running level 2 Lorraine or level 2 Merlin. Um, but I think with the amount of aggro that he's seen, probably, you know, if you see Gildas, I think you can say probably, you know, aggro level two Lorraine. So he's going to want to not commit to board. Um, I think, honestly, I'm kind of holding out my level two as long as possible until he puts down a significant amount of cards from hand. Gildas, Arthur, Lurking, Reads, Aggro. 100%. Yeah, yeah, Like, he should know, for sure. For sure. Plus Bobble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially, like, you know, Ver, Ver does play this game a lot. You know, like, he, he will know what's going on. You can use that to your advantage, though. Um, usually earlier in the game, or just depending on what you're doing, what cards you draw, you can... Uh, Make them wonder if you're in going into Merlin or aggro level two sweep. Plus, he doesn't know for sure if we have sweep or not, so um, he might just get put in this position where he has to just commit to the board in order to try to win the game. And if I have sweep, I have sweep, um, which for us, fortunately, we do have it. Play blue slime. Okay. I'd hope he knows since he took uh, Fire Lorraine aggro to uh, Lynchnels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Like I said, we're playing against a... 
I, I hate saying the word good player, good player, bad player. We're playing against a consistent player, a competitive player. Uh, I'll take four. What is blue slime at now? Uh, three, six. Okay, thank you. That's huge. Uh, one more. Take one. Uh, pass. Uh, influence. Uh, five memory, one hand. Okay, so we put a floating in his drop, but and we'll take a lot from his retaliation with the vigor. I'm sorry, can you remind me what blue slime is? My bad. He's a sorry, three three six. Three six. Uh and then he gains one attack and health if he survives combat. Uh if he takes damage. Okay, if I go into level 2, I can do 4 damage from just those. If I have a sword out 5, he has 6 health. I can't get a 2 damage sword out, so I'll have to go Arthur into blue slime. Like, deflecting edge so that doesn't die. And then still have enough cards for that. So, yeah, I think I, think I have to because this board is already getting scary. I believe it's the right play. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ornamental, give a buff to Arthur. And as soon as I say that, I realize that I cannot do uh, <laughs> that and level two. So, oh well. Um, got too too much in the think tank there. So, Urban Beastmaster is a four four man. Like that blue slime young beast monitor just really threw everything off. Um, just too big of a body. So. Crazy man. Wild. They both have so much attack. I'm going to kill the Beastmaster and lose a deflecting. Really don't like these plays. Uh, we're going to go Flame Rune. I'll swing. Hmm. Three at uh, Beastmaster. Okay. Um, retaliate. I'll do a deflecting edge. Okay. And then Beastmaster has one health left, right? Yeah. We'll go ahead and flame, swing Flame Rune into her. Really not how I wanted to do the turn at all, um, but we, we need to mitigate some of this pressure. Uh, I'll pass. Go ahead. I don't like that Beastmaster is low enough that I can kill her on my level two, so. <clears throat> and that blue slime health just really got me. I need to see immolation traps come in out of the sideboard, like honestly, just to kill off blue slime. And uh, you know, I'm sure he's running like giant tortoise and stuff like that too. I've never felt this much. Three memory, one hand, and you have a sword. Yep, correct. Okay. Um, I've never felt this much pressure from a Sylvie player that also has this many cards in hand. We have Flame Rune and Arthur on board. 
We can't protect one of them for three damage. That blue slime can't attack yet. Which is why I went after the Fervent, because uh, I don't think I actually could have even killed the um, blue slime last turn. That was good. Uh, I don't believe he has any floating here, so he's going to lose two cards to only draw one. So this is going to help... Uh, this is going to help our resource trading. Four. He's going to lose cards going to his level 2, and I'm going to gain cards going to my level 2 if I do it right. Which, if I use Deflecting, I won't have enough for a Flame Sweep. So I might have to just let my board die off, honestly, depending on how the turn looks. That Blue Slime not being able to attack means that he needs to commit more cards to board since we cleared that uh, Fervent Beastmaster. I think Blue Slime's pride. Dude, I, I need to learn Sylvie more. I need to play against Sylvie more. So it's an actual deck now. I need to stop thinking DOA and FTC format. And, uh, well, technically we're still in FTC format, but. This gets to build super tall and capitalize off of ton of incremental pressure gains. Is there a world where you can even bank on a faster kill? They have destruction for the turn two in, any, in almost any open. Yeah, I mean, if he, yeah, right. If he just keeps, if he keeps cards in hand, he has a lot of options. Song of Frost, especially since he's in Tamer. Um, Frostbind. I mean, I thought we were favored going into this matchup, but I'm quickly changing my mind. Definitely need to um, practice this a lot more. Funny thing is, he hasn't even like used the Scepter or anything like that either. Like, this is just Water Sylvie. You know, like, same. Th this matchup could have happened pre ascent. Water Sylvie Dream feels good, man. Yeah. He's dreaming for sure. He's uh doing more than dreaming. Okay, we'll dungeon here. Sounds good. World keep two four six. Ooh, alright. Well, he's not in any pressure of dying anytime soon. But uh Earth tune. This is probably our best turn to sweep. I'm assuming that we're going to see a crawl here. Looks like crawl and just Terra Sites. So, oh no, there is a call to pack. I was wondering if he was not even running. Uh, is Sylvie just a Terra Beast, I think, right? Terra Animal or Beast Ally. Okay, okay, thanks. My bad. I mean, if he plays that, we're really in the prime position for a sweep. But this will give him three cards in hand, so he can just frostbind or sweep now, which is probably what's happening. Send the slime for three at Arthur. Shoot. Um, yep, sounds good. Right, because now he can attack the slime because he has that level three. I think uh, I could have kept that alive this turn, but um, I think I'm in a point right now where I just have to try to sweep next turn, and if he frostbinds it, I just lose. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe I had another turn. Uh, but I'm also out of card draw. Hit flame rune. One. Attempt to kill him. Probably should have. I yeah. I can't keep Flame Room there alive, man, dude. This is insane. Flame Sweep won't even get rid of the blue slime. It'll actually just make it even bigger. This is crazy. I'm like really pressured. Absolutely wild. Um, okay. Collect. Draw. And you paid for some Mook Bomb with a Flame Room? With a Flame Room, yep. So there's Flame Room and Sash still left. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm like legitimately concerned I'll just die, but it is what it is. Time to play Arthur. Might be a good way to... All right, we'll um, invulnerability him, and then I'll just pass. Go ahead. I imagine that would have gotten a Frostbind out of him, so I'm going to say he doesn't have Frostbind. Um, I had no interaction. I had no cards in hand. So, no hand. correct. Okay. Uh, I will grab Covenant of Thorns and yeah. apply the Covenant of Thorns to Arthur. Sounds good. I'm going to kill my own Arthur with my sweep. Like, say, get a card draw. But I'm, con I'm concerned about dying. He has seven damage on board already. Eight now. Another slime. And I'm setting up for a gigantic flame sweep turn. Only bad thing is I'll have to put down my deflecting and probably use my sword to do the flame sweep. So I might be just left with Pretty much no defenses. That's the only really issue. Maybe I'll draw into like a stalwart or something like that. Or another deflecting. I do have more in the deck. Covenant only prevents champion damage. So yeah, I'll sweep and I'm going to kill my own Arthur, which is weird. I'll swing out towards face. So three. Take three. Sounds good. Go to 12, I think? Yep. 12 to 4? Yep. Cool. Okay, so honestly, that was my ideal turn. Sorry, you said pass? Yes. Okay, Covenant is going to prevent damage to your champion, and it'll be redirected to Arthur, correct? Yes. Okay, and Blue Slime is a 3-6? Uh, yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, so I got my turn then. I'll go level 2. Uh, one card in hand, right? Yes. Okay. Um. So Lorraine trigger, recollect draw. I'm gonna swing Arthur into blue slime. Um. Should put him to five health remaining after the damage plus the buff counter. Correct. Uh. Yes. Okay. I'll follow it up with a flame sweep. Uh, sweeping with the ornamental for five on the whole board. Um, and that would kill my Arthur too, correct? Yep, so I okay. take no damage and kills your Arthur. And then uh, I killed five of your allies, I believe? Yes. Okay, so I'll draw six because of the Arthur as well. It just says on kill draw card, so I would believe so. Or unless the Covenant's killing it. That is a good question. Uh, Remedic, I know you're watching. Uh, if he Covenants my Arthur and I Flame Sweep, do I get the draw? I haven't looked at the cards yet, so we can uh, try to ask Andy to come in here and judge. Oh, this matchup is insane. Yeah, Andy. what's the question? If he Covenant of Thorns so, my Arthur, uh, and then I flame... Oh, right. <laughs> if I have Covenant of Thorns... I'm talking, and I'm not actually talking to him. ...and Caven flame sweeps during Lorraine level 2, and that kills... By a Covenant of Thorns, kills one of his allies, does he draw from that ally die or not? So if a damage is redirected to the linked ally, all on hit and all kill effects will still trigger normal. Cool, I got my draw. So yeah, it, it, it will. You, you will get an odd kill trigger. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, we did not draw any. That's yeah, that's kind of insane. No defense, but um, I'm not really as worried about taking 12 damage out of nowhere. So we're just going to build in. Uh, I think. 
some damage. I'll go lurk in his and pass. Okay. The nice thing is. How much incidence left? Uh, seven memory, two hand. Yikes. So the nice thing is we can use uh, lurking to retaliate with something here, um, and then actually like smoke bombs it after it's stealth or after it's rested and loses the stealth to uh, keep it stealth. Um, I have a hone by fire in hand, like that's kind of why I'm like thinking of that play because then it'll give me a draw and I can hone an adversity. Um, if I hone university, I can do a rending, and that would deal twelve damage. I, I do. I should start to like try to close out this game. There's no reason for me to really continue to sit here. I need to do as much. Like a slime dungeon guide and beastmaster. What a great way to get rid of dungeon guides. That flame sweep was brutal for sure. He had any way to fight that, like um, instead of playing a dewdrop hair, if he had a frostbind, I just lost the game. Yeah, that probably did win me the game. But yeah, I mean, if he had frostbind, I, I just lost. That's why that's why I did that um, Arthur turn as well, because um, it just wasn't quite the best time to flame sweep. And if I did it, if I did just an Arthur turn. Maybe I died, unlikely, um, but it was a decent bait out to a Frostbind as well. But yeah, I mean, Ver playing really well here, Just uh, it's just Frostbind was the make or break for that game. And I, I haven't won yet at all. He set up next turn lethal and banked on you not having it because he thought you would sweep before. Yeah, for sure. I, there were absolutely opportunities for me to sweep. Um, okay. yeah. Did you say pass? Yep. Okay, so we're just going to do as much damage as possible, which I think includes smoke bombing this turn. Um, it means I would lose doing that on a taunter, but I think I could maybe go for lethal. 16, 12, and I don't actually know if I can go for lethal. Uh, we will pop smoke bombs, um, at the end of your turn, draw a card, restand, and we're going to go into adversity and then prayer collection. I'll do a home by fire. Yep. Recollect and draw. Um, Gotta do math. This is three, six, twelve, twelve, sixteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty. Yeah, it's just it's just simply not enough. So we're gonna go for a bunch of damage this turn, but um, we're also gonna keep uh, a little bit of defenses up. Okay, I'll swing two. Yep. Place construct and swing three. Go for a rending. Any response? Uh, nope. Okay, I'll banish three and use sort of adversity. Okay. Four damage. I'll do a adversity. Sounds good. So heal four and then take 12. So take eight, basically. Um, should put you at 14 to my 12. Uh, so is that nine? I heal four to five and you're hitting me for... 
uh, three from adversity, three from rending, doubled. So 12. Okay, I had you at 14, but maybe I forgot the, yeah, I, you know, I think I forgot the scrapping construct of damage. Uh, I'll pass, go ahead. Nice. Beautiful. Love to see it. Don't believe he can cast um, crawl. I think he's still yeah, he doesn't have any preserved cards, so he still needs to like fall into pact at the moment. Unless he like double terrorites right now. I don't want to deflect in this links. Probably. Until it comes to me. Cards in hand? One. I'll deflect in it. Sounds good. So, 11 damage, pain two each time. I don't. I still don't think I'm gonna be able to kill him. Question is, do I go for the links or just go face? Links is three three, right? Yes. I'm gonna kill links and do two face. I'll go Constrict into the links. Because that links is online, so. I'll swing two with Lurking Sail into face. Yep. I'll pass, go ahead. Game is going on so much longer than I need it to. I likely would have lethal next turn, but I'm I'm really getting into dangerous territory. I need to just get this game over with. Yep. Hey Zach, you want a sticker gave away by the way? I think you just popped in the stream. We did it at the beginning. I'll give you a true champion gaming sticker nice next time I see you. That's pretty nice. A good beast. I love the best of one format. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
Bird's not playing super fast, and it's probably because he probably doesn't have that many reps on this deck. And I actually don't have that many reps on my deck either, so I'm also not playing very fast. That's terrifying. Yep, sounds good. Holy crap. Holy crap. Ball's a huge problem. Should be fine. So it's a 6 8. They'll have to kill us. Yeah, and. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, you're good. Uh, we'll take 6. And then, can you remind me, Crawl's effect again? Also, doesn't help that I don't know these cards. Spell Shroud, True Sight, and Rigor. And 6 8, right? 6 8, yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um. Yeah. Birdie goes for one. Going fast. And step, I'll create a shock. Okay, there's a rending finally. Dang, we drew rending and hone. That's so unfortunate, but, uh,. Owns definitely the better one to discard there. Especially, uh, yeah. So we'll recollect, draw. Which card did you discard on creative? Uh, Honed by Fire. If I hit Crawl with my champion, I die. Unless I deflecting. So to kill crawl means three more damage than also rending for eight. Holy shoot, dude. How do I beat this? Crawl doesn't have preserve, right? He himself does not, no. Okay, cool. And then can you reveal the top card of your deck? Yep, sorry about that. Bro, what the heck do I do? So I have Five damage on board. I need to get another three to crawl. I don't really have good options for that, to be honest. I do have a stalwart. I just have to set up for next turn and hope he can't crawl again. That seems so bad, especially with him drawing a guy as Songbird. What did this game become? Unless I... Rending for eight into crawl, deflecting, and then still don't have enough cards to kill him. Yeah, that seems even worse. It is terrifying. So three, two, leaves me with a deflecting, and that's it. Terrible. I don't like any of these options, but I have to make a move. Um, I'll go Strapping Construct into Crawl for three. I'll go Lurking Assailant for two. Yep. Not retaliating, because uh, he knows that he needs to keep that up against my champion. One, two, three... I'll go Flame Rune and swing into Crawl. Okay. So he's taken seven points of damage. Go Hasty and swing into Crawl on attack effect. I'll discard Creative Shock, draw one, and attempt to kill Crawl. Literally forgot that was on his field. That's so embarrassing. Holy shit, dude. My inexperience against Sylvia is showing. That's wild, dude. That was literally right on the field. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep, we'll swing uh, Lorraine and crawl. I'll deflect the nudge, take three. 
And then, yeah, you got it. Yep. Jeez, man. That was uh, that was sitting right in front of my face, but I just have not had enough reps against Sylvie to uh, uh, know what I was doing, honestly. Yeah, and I, I overextended into that sweep. Almost got to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was a really, really good game, though, man. Um, I guess we can attempt to play game two. Why not? Um, yeah. We'll see. take out bro honestly it's is wild but i'm just gonna take out creative shocks <sighs> probably should take out shield mate Yeah, that was, I mean, Dylan, or, yeah, Dylan, Dylan played well. Um, that was pretty much my inexperience against uh, Sylvie, because I would have been able to build a crawl and have a deflecting up, so maybe I could have um, survived that next turn, and then hopefully he can't kill my board. If he kills my board, then I probably have enough health to... Uh, yeah, I feel like I definitely choked that one out a um, little bit due to webcam. It's always hard for me personally to notice all the reality and stuff on board, and also just experience inexperience with uh, Sylvie. So definitely my own misplays there. All right, uh, I will go first. Uh, half cuts good again? Yep. Cool, same for you. I'm just going to go ahead and start because we're on a time clock. Um, all right, one, two, three. I'll go lurking and pass. Okay. Phone rending won't work since he cut creative. Oh, because the fire discard, yeah. Yeah, double hound would be wild. Pairs and hit you for one. Sounds good. I'll level up one, two, three, four, five, six. Finish lurking, go into Lorraine, I'll go into sword of seeking. Your uh feed is a little choppy. Oh, sorry. Just battering it up moment, I'm sure. Um so went into Lorraine, going into Sword of Seeking, and then I'm gonna hone by fire pre recollection. Puts me to zero cards in hand. Any interaction? Uh, how much in memory? It's uh, four in memory. Okay. Uh, cool. No, you're up. Okay. Um, recollect and draw. My feed from him is fine, so I don't think it's my internet. Um, I'll go ahead and swing... Lorraine into your champion for three. Okay. Swing lurking assailant for two. Yep. 
I'll play a flame room, puts me to three in memory, one in hand, and then I'll swing two with it. And I'll pass, go ahead. Copy for you too. All right, it's probably probably the internet here then. good what's in your graveyard uh just one hone by fire um, i don't know i'm like leaning towards the mic every single time i, I don't need to do that <laughs> we'll kill flame room flame room dies Sense. I was wondering why I didn't kill Lurkin Salient. Sounds good. Uh, my three to your seven. Yep. That's your go. All right. Um, yeah, I need to just draw some cards, I think. Probably won't be able to kill or attack with that Lynx for a while, so. Collect, draw. Uh, so just DCR, recollect, draw. Yep. Um, pop ring. Not a fan of this at all, but I think it's the way to go. No, it can't be. Yeah, I need to get animals and beasts off this field. I'm going to do it. It's bad, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and flame sweep 4 2 on the whole board. And then I'll kill the lynx with a assailant. And I'll pass. 4 in memory, 1 in hand. Um, so the reason I did that is it puts a floating memory in his drop, which I don't really like, but it's going to keep him off the level two draws for a while. Uh, and I have two flame sweeps in hand. Um, and I just didn't really have any ways to like continue to develop the board really. Um, just wasn't the ideal turn, but I did what I could with my hand. Yeah. Yeti game. Yeti, Yeti webcams are such a fantastic thing for this game. I'm so happy. Anyone that says they don't have any locals or anything um, can join these. And you have a fantastic community, good TO, um, great prizing, just all around good stuff. Oh, and Flame Suite hits you too, so I think you should go to nine. Yeah, I don't know if you I got that. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Thanks. Very relevant. Very, very relevant. It is my rules because of the webcam. Yeah, feel that, man. The fantastic resource for uh, the Grand Archive community. Big props to Yeti. Super happy that they're in uh, involved with uh, GA so much. Graveyard's currently one fire type. Uh, correct.
Links hurt. So oh, water bobble recollect draw. Pop bobble. Uh, how many cards in hand? Six. Pass again. Um, yeah. How many each? How much influence do you have? Sorry. How much influence do you have? Sure, that's fine. Place strapping, I'll swing into the links. Uh, it's, it's two attack right now. Yep. I shouldn't be doing this either. I should be swinging face. I think I'm 100% throwing right now. Play Banner Knight, swing one into Lynx, and then I'll pass. One in hand, five in memory. Sorry, four in memory. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just like literally throwing, man. Um, trying to play too fast because of time restraints and very far off over on that game one, too. But uh, I mean, like, I guess like Bestel Frenzy would like screw me over pretty hard. So maybe I'm not throwing, but I probably just need to go face because of time constraints anyway. Because I kind of want that Lynx to be on the board so that if I do go level two, Actually, I can't even level 2, can I? Yeah, I can't level 2 and plane speed. So I'll just be down on too much card advantage because that raccoon. Yeah, wow. Water's, water's doing something for sure. He's at 5, right? Uh, like cards in hand or something? I don't know. Yeah, we do have a good scene in Michigan. A lot of uh, competitive players. Play there. Sounds good. And Pull off my construct. I get one more fire and drop. I can flame or uh, rending, but I actually don't think I can get that in drop at all. So we're just gonna go. Um, oddly enough, I'm gonna go terraforming. It's too slow of a play for our time constraints, but I think normally this would be the right play. Um, we're gonna kill off that guy, which we're gonna do with. I'll play strapping and then I'll do two with strapping and one with banner knight into the bear. Yep. I'll play another strapping, I'll swing two into you. Yep. And then I'll pass. Go ahead. Um with Tariff, I don't think he'll be able to play a beast, frenzy, and attack. And even though I have one health allies on board, again, Tariff's gonna Probably slowing down too much. This should get me in a position where I can just go uh, either level two or even just um, crystal and just do too much next turn. <sighs> oh, yeah, he did. So current life is you're at seven. I'm at three, right? Yes. Thanks, Terry. So ah, that's why you said he's at five. I'll pop my own tariff. Yeah, so he's going tariff, so he doesn't die next turn. Um, yeah, yeah, Kanye, you were uh, right. I just forgot about the fast cure. I still can't level. Very awkward. He kills one strapping. I can rend him. Yep, sounds good. I think he might go for Pay killing a construct. Yeah. Construct. Yep, sounds good. Next turn. 
get it. He, I think he kind of had to. Um, here we'll just go crystal. We're not really gonna get the rending. Um, yeah, we'll crystal move to recollection. Sure. Sounds good. Draw. This is wild. Might need to literally pop Crystal on his turn so my strapping doesn't die, but that seems uh, awful. Uh, okay, thanks. Three, four, five. I can put him to 17. Leave my constructs mm -hmm. up. Seems bad though. I can do that pretty much any turn. Might just need to swing with stuff on the board and not really do anything. All right, I'll put two down and swing into uh, Young Beast Spawner with Banner Knight. Then I'll put two down to swing, strapping into face. Go ahead. Um, terrible, terrible turn. But if he goes into level two, he's at least not going to draw. If he goes into anything outside of level two, um, I might be able to just rending him next turn. That's kind of where my thought process was. If he goes level two, yeah, which he did. Um, now I need rending plus a construct, which isn't going to happen. My board's not staying alive this turn. Sure. Okay, this is really interesting because he's going to gain more health, but we might literally be able to crystal just to keep the construct alive, which might be worth it. I think I probably would. Oh man, that is heavy glitching out. What the heck is happening? Hey Dylan, can you try like turning your camera on and off really quickly? Um, it's just glitching out. Thank you. Oh, you're good. You can keep going. I could hear. I could hear you. So you're you're good. Okay. Now he has the songbird, so the construct's dead, no matter what. Oh, I, he's dead on the first songbird, but. Um, I can't. Flame sweep and going to level two because I just have had no floating memory from that card getting eaten. Uh, he dungeon got into the three, uh, did double songbird. Conscript. conscript dies. Yeah. I'm still messing up. Might be slow internet or something. Okay, he passed. Um, all right. I don't like any of my options, honestly. I'll go ornamental, give the buff to Banner Knight. Okay. Collect, draw, do like that. Oh, we might have got there. Um, Eight plus nine is seventeen. Eighteen, nineteen. Twenty-three. Am I still off? I'm still off. That's so sad. Um, might just do it anyways. I think. Okay. Uh, and you said we went into times on your turn. Or was that my turn? Like, is this? Do I have another turn after this? So it was. I announced, or I realized it was time during your prior turn. 
Okay, so this is my last turn. Yes. Okay, so I think we lose then. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I think I have it. Okay, I'll pop crystal. Um, yep. And then we're going to go three down for rending. Uh, so banishing three fire, I'll attempt to deal 10 damage to you with the two damage sword and the three rending doubled. Yeah, I take that. Okay, puts you to 19. I'll swing two with banner knight. Yep. And then I'll do my last two cards. One down, four blazing throw. <laughs> yeah, very lucky top deck. All right, geez. Uh, good games, though, man. Um, definitely need to practice against Sylvie more. And uh, yeah, that was insane. Yeah. This connection is bad for sure, not yours. Okay, well, good to know. Um, fantastic games there from him. Uh, I honestly got a lucky top deck with that Blazing Throw. Um, that card just yeah, good luck with is insane. Matches. You too. Okay, let's go ahead and report. <clears throat> Uh, let's switch the stream over as well. Okay, I don't want literally either one of those. Okay. All right. Pulse. Very good. Or did not report. All right. Well, didn't expect it to go with a draw on fire aggro Sylvie, but um, happens. There was a lot of interaction in that game one. Uh, I mean, we went like five turns longer in that game one than I thought we would. crazy stuff yeah blazing throw blazing throw is wild um i always want to put more copies of blazing throw in just because of instances like that it helped so much in game one and game two um but you don't want to see too many of them especially because like you're not really wanting to sacrifice that many weapons in this uh in this deck so we're running it as a two of which i think makes sense um but yeah she really showed its strength in in that match for sure Starting off the night with a draw. So we can't win the FTC box. Uh, best we can do is win the next three and we get like a gold pack. Um, so we'll try. Yeah, that was just kind of insane. I'm like still trying to process that game. Put me on Water Sylvie. It's time for the gauntlet. Yeah, I know. Like, we really do need to test against Water Sylvie. Uh, if anything, that goes to show that it's a real deck. Um, you know, I mean, Sylvie historically just like loses when it loses board control. Um, but uh, he was able to to fight me for board control the in, but the entire time, both games. Would be interesting to see how that game one would have went if I didn't misplay, but also he would have had game two if uh, I didn't top deck blazing throw. So yeah, definitely a match that I'm interested in seeing more of for sure. Looks like Andy's typing out the next. Oh, you know what I need to do is I need to de sideboard. Jeez, get distracted. All right, new rounds up. We'll have to take these immolation traps out, put back in my creative shocks. No idea if creative shock was actually the right call to side out or not. I just 
didn't think we really had any dead cards in the matchup and uh we had a side quickly because of the time crunch so um i figured i wanted to be applying pressure not necessarily like filtering in that matchup so that's why i went for that the one thing is fire learning after cleave draw six yes it was really wild matchup hey how's it going man good So just giving you a heads up, I am streaming tonight, uh, and I'll, I'll have push to talk on. So um, I'll try to talk as much as possible. And uh, yeah, good luck. Um, are you good with a two dice high roll? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. I got an eight. Awesome. Looks like you'll go first. Uh, I'm going to shuffle up a little bit. And then after that, are you good with half cuts? Cool, same for you too. Sounds good. So I wonder if we get paired against another person that drew. We might see another water. All right, good luck, man. Then uh, don't forget your spirit. Yep, thank you. Here's where we see water. Uh, I did flash a little bit there, so I did see a Lorraine spirit ruler. Uh, shouldn't know the information, but... We're against Fire Lorraine as well. Maybe a more uh, Limelight-esque build than uh, us, but... This one. You're up. Sounds good. Interesting hand. Okay. I'll go flame ring, swing two. I'll go stalwart and pass. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, end of your turn. Oh, creative shock. Discord screen when you're ready. Hey, that's shock. super important, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> important that you guys can Card. see. Tempered steel. Bro, dude. Uh, go to my <laughs> material. Oh, oh man. man. We'll get a little bit more used to streaming one day. Sounds good. And Lorraine. Pretty ideal start for him. And then on Lorraine, enter. Let me see. Let me pull Pretty much exactly what a fire level three Lorraine wants to do. The adversity sword. Terrifying. I have no idea what just happened there. Two for a clumsy. I'll take two and draw. Very odd. Ritual on the clumsy. Sounds good. Draw two more. Well, he has card advantage, that's for sure. For sure, he has card advantage. We're going to pay three rending flames. Lorraine is going to attack with a sword and a rending flames. And on attack, I'm going to bench these three to double it. Sure. Uh, j just, just a heads up. I do have a stalwart shield mate. Uh, 
I do have a stalwart shield made out, so it does have yep. taunt. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um. All good, and this vanishes. Uh, that's it. Go ahead. Oh. Trying to let him know before he like fully committed. Um, but I missed my push to talk. <laughs> I'll go ahead and level up. Uh, I'll swing two with flame room. Yep. I'll play Gildas. Uh, three in memory, three in hand. So uh, I will swing four with her. She's balanced. Yep. And we'll pass. Go ahead. Materialize a ring. Go left. Draw. I'll use this to draw as well. Still a lot of cards in hand. New player, maybe. Yeah, it could be a new player. Also, like I said. It's just like that webcam thing. Sometimes you just miss things that are on your opponent's screen because they're not they're not actually in front of you. What is Gildas's power at four? Uh, it's a one attack, three health, and then if it's balanced, it becomes a four attack, three health. So right now it is technically four three. Yes. Thank you. I'm gonna say probably a new player. Most people do know what to. Go. I'm gonna attack your Lorraine for one. Sounds good. And on attack, I'll discard. Uh, good night, Terry. Draw a card. Yeah, I wish that I wish that running play had gone a little differently because I would have liked to let him take it back. Honestly, I take the Yeti events a little bit more casually. Um, they're just locals, basically, to me. Definitely would choose to help a new player out over. Gain an advantage. I'll put the, the, the Baruch and Acolyte and destroy your sword. Sounds good. That's brutal. Uh, we'll go ring, and then I'll recollect and draw. Five, six, seven. Might have to just straight up rending here to keep Gildas balanced. I think that is the better play. Um, yeah, I just have to rend in here to keep Gildas balanced. We're just going for lethal. Um, we'll swing two with the flame rune. That acolyte was so good, actually. It's crazy. I'll put three down to Rending Flame. Um, no cards in Graveyard, just attempting to deal three. Yep. Uh, we'll swing Gildas. She's balanced. Three cards in hand, three cards in memory. Four into a champion. I'll pop ring and draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess we go for it. Uh, how many cards in hand? Uh, three. Three. All right. Uh, well, we're gonna get a little greedy. I'm gonna put three down and play another Gildas. She is unique, so I'm gonna have to choose to kill my other Gildas. <laughs> yep. 
And then I'm going to attempt to swing for one. Yep, you got it. Okay. <laughs> Good game. If you had a deflecting edge there, that was uh, a very, very yeah. greedy play by me, but... Nah, I'm sorry. I got... It's a, only my second run with the deck, and I got too excited when I saw the damage in my hand and completely forgot about the Interceptor. I was like, yeah, well... Sure, sure, yeah. I totally get that. Pay more attention than you thought. It's, it's hard on webcam, too. Like, the cards aren't, like, actually in front of you. Um, so you just miss things. Like, I, I literally lost last game because I missed a, a regalia on my opponent's side of the board. Fair. Oh, let's see. All right, so we're going to do the good old two bobble swap into better cards. In the side deck, and uh, we're not going to really need Raccoon or Immolation Trap here, I don't think. Like, Raccoon could be good, don't get me wrong, because of the floating memory. But there's not, like, something that we want to take out of our deck to put Raccoon in. Um, so I think, I think we just keep the main board as is. Yeah. All right, take your time siding. I'm all done, so when you are ready, you can let me know if you'd like to go first or second. I'm also new, watching, lurking, haha. Uh, your stream to learn more as I don't have a local player base. Just collecting at this time. Awesome, yeah. Uh, feel free to like ask questions and stuff. Um, if you're new, I recommend joining the main Discord. That's linked on the Granite Archive website. Um, we also have our True Champion Gaming Discord that is linked down below. Um, definitely a good resource to join, play games in when, when you're ready to play games, or just to, like ask oh, questions oh, and talk about stuff. Sounds good. Uh, half cut's good again? Perfect. But uh, yeah, nice to have you, Kyle. Uh, games, literally fantastic. Uh, I played card games for like 10 to 15 years. Uh, and, you know, it's hands down my favorite game. And it's only been out for like, you know, right. less than a year. Good luck. Let's do this. Good luck. Um, but yeah, no, no other card game has came close to this for me. Uh, and it's just looking even more fun with uh, set three. But you don't need to look too far in the future. Um, there's a lot of things to look forward to in set two. Uh, there's so much creativity, especially after this ban list. We have another Proxy's Vault card getting added uh, in a few weeks here. Increasing danger. Draw our card. Put one in the memory. Sounds good. So, little uh, important thing there. Increasing danger. We both get to put one into recollection. Now, I'm actually not going to get this in my next turn. Because the first turn of the Go game... Ahead. For each player, you actually skip all phases, basically, um, except for draw phase. I'll go Spirit of Fire and then draw eight. No, we're good because I have an extra one there. All right, there you go. Oh, my apologies. There we go. You're all good. All right, what do we want to do here? We want to kill that hasty. So we're going to attempt to do just that. One, two, three, four. I'll put four down and I'll play Arthur. Um, and I will yep. attempt to swing into the hasty. Yeah, that's fine. See you there. Sounds, sounds good. I'll put two down and play Stalwart Shieldmate and I'll end my turn. Go ahead. for it one through five yep sounds good that one. five one two three four five work for you watching caven is how i learned to play a great resource thank you quicks erupting rhapsody goes away I want to thank you for the stream too no locals in nc either so nice to be able to watch game live gameplay yeah awesome i mean i'm super happy that people are actually enjoying it <laughs> it's a uh, it's great to have you guys watching I follow both you and main deck. Yeah, main deck's a great content creator for the game. Um, he started to do a lot more ran archive focused content within the past uh, month or two. Uh, hour away from Fargo. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Starters with friends is a fantastic way to start the game, man. Don't worry about it. Great way to start the game. Glad you guys are uh, enjoying the stream. How's it going, Fuji?
we are uh, a little bit more. Arthur is a three toughness, is that correct? That is correct, yep. Uh, so the shield mate is up, so sure. she does right, have taunt. Attack into, attack into the shield mate, okay, me. cool. Yeah, no worries. Uh, and then the sword stays active. Not that it really matters, but just to let you know. Thank you. Um, and... Just woke up. Awesome. Yeah. We uh, we are much more refreshed over here on my end. <laughs> Actually getting to play GA this time. Sounds good. Uh, Fireball, but I thought I saw a Crux Ruler. So we might be seeing Main Deck Dan's deck here, actually. Um, doing the Merlin or Lorraine strategy. Uh, I'll banish the Shield Mate and go into level 1. Bring out Sword of Seeking, and then Recollect and draw. Bernie, I took a draw in round 1. Played against a water sylvie deck that um was a very fantastic match actually i would recommend once the live stream's over going back and watching it it was a really really good match i need to get some more practice against sylvie um all right so we'll go ahead and swing two with arthur yeah Put two down for Banner Knight. Swing two into you. Yep. I think I'm just gonna go pretty, um, pretty hard here. Playing into a little bit of a flame sweep, but I think it's worth it. Uh, we're gonna go Gildas and swing two. Yep. Then I'll swing. Then I'll swing one with Sword of Seeking, and I'll pass my turn, putting you to seven to my zero. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, give it a go, Kyle. Um, good resource there. It's still growing for sure, but uh, becoming more on, more active every single day. Fire Aggro Mirror. No, he's playing um, for sure level 3 Lorraine, and I think he might be going into like a go ahead and Merlin the engine as well. Um, if you've seen Main Deck Dan's ninth place bubble deck from Ascent, uh, I think it's I think it's something similar to that. What app do you use for your life count? Um, I think it's literally just called Life Tracker. Pretty sure. Uh, if you download it, I recommend going into like the settings and resetting the starting life total to zero, so you don't have to manually reset the life every single time you open up the app. A little bit of a self-plug, if you guys are watching and enjoying the live stream and you are not subscribed so far, consider giving us a, a subscription. Um, you know, be more notified when we go live every week. Yep, sounds good. That's definitely rough. I needed that um, reflecting edge up. My thought process was if he went uh, level 2 Lorraine Flame Sweep, he wouldn't also have enough for Acolyte so I could at least protect the Arthur. And um, Let's do a... hopefully out tempo him, but it was definitely a risky play. But we're doing good so far. Should go Arthur, and he doesn't need to use the sword. Let's Rip. attack the Gildas, I guess. Sounds good. Okay, I'll wake up. Think on materialization. Um, and you know, I've run a lot of allies in this deck, but uh, more. I don't have any really right now. Um, kind of an awkward earn for me if i'm being honest uh i'll go into ornamental and i'm gonna give banner knight an extra attack yeah. uh 
Uh, we'll swing two with Arthur into a champion. Yep. Swing two with Banner, or sorry, three. Yes. I'll go home by fire on the ornamental, give it an extra durability and two extra attack. And then I'll swing with Lorraine for three into champion. Could get greedy here, play a lurking assailant, and swing for three more, putting them one away, two away from lethal. Um, but that's really gonna let a flame sweep. Actually, if he flame sweeps, I can just kill him with rending. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna go the lurking strategy. I'm gonna put the rest of my hand down for lurking and swing three at champion. Yeah. And then I'll pass. Go ahead. He flame sweeps me here. He'll go to 24 health. Uh, which only leaves him six health remaining, and it'll put another fire card in my drop. So I should be able to just go Tempered Steel for my third third fire card, materialize um, Adversity first, and then do Rending for ten. That way, even if he, uh, oh no, if he if he does have Deflecting, it would only do four, but actually would keep him alive. Um, but. Uh, Sounds good. And draw for turn off of Requiem. Yeah, at, at this point, it should just be game. So if he doesn't kill Arthur, I have an Arthur on board. And if he does kill Arthur, that'll let me get the rending play set up. He'd have to like literally have double deflecting, which is a possibility. <laughs> How's it going, Eli? You playing tonight? Uh, no, you you don't usually play the Yetis, I don't think. Yep, always four rounds. Sorry, I was I was in the think tank, not looking at the chat for a little bit. Um, yeah. So even if there 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 there's usually multiple four O's at the end of the night, but because they start so late anyways, they just want to respect people's time and do four rounds. Which I'm very grateful for because these usually end past midnight for me, so. Sounds good. I mean, he could sweep for three here. That'd actually be a pretty good play. Because he's not drawing, it leaves him wide open, so I should just have... I think he has it. Or... Oh, rending. Okay. One, Sounds two. good. I'll take 10. It, yeah, it cancels out. You're up. Go. Go. Crystal. I'll go uh, Crystal, recollect, and draw, and we'll attempt to swing two with Arthur. Yeah, I got All it. Alright. You're good. Good game, man. You got it. Yeah, good game. in the first hand not super helpful <laughs> are you running um the hybrid build like merlin or lorraine yeah i have both of them in here i just um i didn't do well with merlin when i played at ascent i did okay i won a couple but nothing crazy so i kind of tried to play this more loaded more aggressively maybe but uh i think the big the big whiff there in game one obviously that hurt and then I missed sequence earlier in that game. I should have done it a little differently, but the shield mate sled also didn't help my case. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's a it's a cool list though. Um, I do like that, and uh, it definitely seems like it'd be hard to like pick up and go. Like, it definitely definitely need to get some reps in with it. It's uh, there's so many lines. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play the. Uh, I'm gonna I want to play this a couple more times. See if I can kind of figure it out but I, I think i want to build a terra something or other i have a no good number of cards so nice yeah i uh i played against water sylvie that ran terra uh last round and it was a much harder match than i thought um so <laughs> definitely feel like it has some strength right now sure no, but good game good game man good luck in the rest of your rounds yeah good luck all right 
let's go ahead and switch back over to... You good to report? Yep, I can get it. Thank you. Yep. This, and uh, I'll, I'll actually switch to the match um, when we start our next round. I forgot to switch to the match when we started. Uh, hold on, guys. Let me just report before I forget. All right. Uh... So we drew last round, and then we're the first ones to finish this round. That's uh, that's water, man. That's water. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. So Eli, uh, Champions Quarters, for those of you that don't know his name, um, has a Discord and a webcam local fires Thursday nights. Yep. So, uh, it starts 8 p.m. EST. So whatever that is for your time zone. Um, you just basically. Join that uh, Discord. They have a server, or not a server, a channel named Weekly Events. It's like pretty close to the top, and they'll always post the link to their sign up in the in that channel. Um, it's five dollars to enter, and you get free shipping, which is crazy. Like Yeti doesn't make money on these events. Literally, any money that they make is spent doing shipping, basically. Um, and. Uh, yeah, you'll get a silver pack no matter what if you sign up and play, which is really cool. And then if you go 3-0, you get uh, some gold packs, pack or pack, depending on how many people there are. Um, and then if you go 4-0, you will get a FTC uh, booster box, which is really awesome. Um, and uh, you'll get qualification for their Champion of Champions tournament. So if you go 4-0 in any of their events, at the end of the season, um, usually like, you know, a month or two, uh, I think like, yeah, two months or so, um, they will do a tournament for just the people that have gone 4-0 in their events. And that's really cool. I got to play in it last time, and I think I took second losing to Matt G in the finals. Um, and it was a really fun experience. And they hooked up the prize in there, like, Matt won like two hundred fifty dollars store credit and like a couple other things, uh, and then I got like a hundred dollars store credit for going second. Which again, they make no money on these events. So the fact that they did an extra event for the winners where they gave away like I think it was like a like five hundred to a thousand dollars in store credit for free, like really awesome. Yeti is absolutely trying their best, and then they also do um, raffles each week too. So like last week, I won an ordinary bear raffle. Uh, so I got an Ordinary Bear promo that you can only get from events like this. Uh, and then they do like playmat raffles too, I think. They have foil Ordinary Bear raffles. I've seen them do raffles for FTC boxes even, I think. Like Yeti hooks it up. And uh, Andy is the TO for that, the organizer. Very, very fantastic guy. Um, good judge as well. So he's a, he's a good judge for the event. Um, is Frostbind good or bad with how easy it is to play around? Frostbind is very good. Um, it's not that easy to play around. Like, there's a lot of decks that will just have to play out their hand in order to do something that they need to do on that turn. Um, you know, it's not like it's not like Frostbind is going to be good every single turn. Sure, there's some turns where your opponent will just like play around it, but they're not going to be able to do that the entire game. So Frostbind, Frostbind is a really good card. Yeah. Um, I got fifty dollars in free merch. Great event. Yeah, like. Yeti's amazing. Uh, also, here, Eli, I am actually going to make you an official moderator. Never mind. It is not letting me select your name. We made Terry and Isaac mods earlier, but uh, it's not working now. I was going to make you a mod, Eli. Um, I wasn't able to play tonight, Sally. Really want one of those bears. Yeah, it's hard because you still have to win one. I mean, we had, I think, 39 players tonight, and only 16 people are walking away with bears, two of them being foil. So you're you're far from guaranteed one. Uh, I think, basically, they weren't expecting this type of attendance for events because I think, I think the intention behind the Ordinary Bear promos was to give everyone that played in the online events weekly um, a bear promo. But uh, I think it was just more popular than they realized, which is a really good problem for the game. It's, it's great that this many people want to play weekly in a webcam tournament. Um, but yeah, so I think that's why they're doing the raffles right now, just because supplies are limited. But hopefully we, we get to a point where 
if you play in the event, you get a bear or whatever the current promo is for the online event at that point. Um, yeah, Kyle, if they're insane events, uh, it's, it's next to nothing for entry. You know, $5 is, uh, really cheap for tournament entry. It, it's, I mean, it's literally the cheapest they could do. Um, like I said, after their shipping costs, after all these other freebies that they're doing, Yeti, Yeti loses money on these events, but they're doing it to help create the community and, um, give all these people that maybe don't have an in-person place to play um, a chance to do that every single week and win some rewards for it, get some event pack uh, packs. And for the people like me that just can't get enough GA and want to play every single day, it's a, it's another it's another way to play every single day. So yeah, really fantastic events. I can't talk them up enough. Uh, I think we de-cyboarded. I'm going to check my sideboard real quick. Yeah, so we're all de-sideboarded, ready for the next match. Um, I'm not sure what time we actually started. Let me go look at that. We started at 9.18, it's 9.47. So we have we have over 30 minutes till the next round. So we got some time to chat, y'all. Um, that was a very quick game. Uh, we got some time to kill. So yeah, let's just do exactly that. Let's talk GA, right? Uh, especially since regionals are coming, need to practice with my leader list. Absolutely, man. I mean, like, I, I, I immediately felt that in round one when I played against the Water Sylvie deck. I was like, this is embarrassing how little I know what Sylvie does for being, you know, a high caliber player of GA. Um, you just really didn't need to test against Sylvie enough to, like, know the deck inside and out in FTC and DOA meta pre ascent. Um, but uh, you know, yeah, I think I think it's I think it's got some legs now for sure. So I'm I'm gonna have to grind some Sylvie games and uh, get more familiar with those cards and that strategy. Love to start playing in online events. Yeah, there used to be around 20 people for an event until Yeti was made into the official NA tournament. Yeah, it's interesting because Yeti, yeah, Yeti was getting about 20 people per week, and then they'd have these random weeks where they would like double the prize support. So they put two event kits into it instead of one. And on those weeks, we usually would get 30 to 40 people, which meant that like it almost was the same prizing because we had double the prizing, but then like double the people showed up. So it was kind of funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting like 40 to 50 people each week now because they're the official online uh events which mean that now we get the ordinary bear promos which i think a lot of people are playing for those but also like just more attention got put on the yeti so um more people were made aware of it which is fantastic you know like the more people that know this is an option the better um always been a lot of people in the ftc yetis yeah for sure i need to check it out in the future yeah definitely do um it's a good like i i would recommend three discords to join if you if you want to play or if you want to be involved with ga and that is the, absolutely the main discord that's the best one if you only if you're particular about how many discords you join join the main discord after that join our discord true champion gaming which is linked below and also join the yeti discord which uh going forward on our live streams on our weekly live streams when we play in the yeti event we'll make sure to link the yeti discord in the description below too so that'll be an easy way for you to find that link um if you if you can't find that link if you can't find the yeti discord go join our discord and ask in general for a link to the yeti discord and someone will link it there um if no one does at the end of the night after i stream i'll link it to you um because yeah those are the three discords that you absolutely should be joining if you want to be in ga um there's a couple of, like marketplace discords as well to join um so realistically like you can get into like five plus discords if you're interested in this game um, there's that many active, healthy discords to join into and like get value from each one, um, which is really awesome. Everyone wants Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, especially now that Sylvie's actually playable. Like, um, you know, Sylvie's, Sylvie's definitely feeling like it has some legs. So I think those ordinary player promos are going to be even more sought after. Once I'm a mod, I can send the links for discords every 30 minutes or so. Yeah, let me, uh, let me try again. Let me try again. Nope, still not working. I don't know why. That's weird. I don't think I'm in the Yeti Discord yet. Yeah, just uh, ask for the link in our Discord. You know what I can do? I can I, I will drop a link right now into our Discord in the um, general chat of our Discord. Oh, 
Oh, there you go. If you're in TCG's Discord, go to general chat. Link is right there. Come join the Yeti server. Fantastic server to be in. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so we, we still, man, we still have some time to kill. So let's talk meta, right? This was what I'm playing tonight. Fire Ally Agro Lorraine was an attempt to have a good matchup against the Wind Agro matchup with a Wind Ally Agro matchup that our team took to first, second, and fifth of Ascent. And it's funny because um, a lot of people were talking about how they wanted to play that deck uh, after Ascent and. I'm a really big store as well. I sell a lot of singles on uh, like TCG player and stuff. I've opened up 350 boxes of first edition and around that many of altar as well. I, I've honestly lost track of all. So I have a lot of singles listed and I will say I probably sold like 13 to 14 deck cores of our deck after Ascent um, and, and plenty more of like a play set of like some of the unique cards that we had like you know a tune the winds that maybe some people didn't have um, in because that wasn't really a playable card and it was a rare so it's kind of hard to get so you know i i sold like tons and tons and tons of cards needed for people to put together our deck and i haven't really seen many people playing it lately um maybe that's just my own experience i i, I have yet to play it against it in a yeti event i have yet to really like see it when i'm just testing online and stuff like that um so it's kind of interesting that like there was a lot of hype and demand for that deck and then it kind of seems like maybe people are just waiting to play it until closer to regionals um but some regionals are coming up really soon like dallas is like at the end of the month you know uh nine days away that's crazy in a week and a half so you know like there should be some people trying to practice their regionals decks and their short championship decks um i think most people should be on that strategy already that's kind of what i'm doing um, so yeah, it's really interesting to not see that many of those yet. And, uh, I think this deck has one of the best matchups into it, which is why I was playing it because I want to see how this deck will fare into all the other matchups, um, which water definitely felt like a little bit of a struggle, surprisingly. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see how the rest of the night goes. Uh, it's a little hard to take how that last matchup went because a little bit of a new player wasn't playing super optimally. Um, I think in general that matchup might just be good anyways um so we'll see how the rest of the night goes uh definitely this is a deck that i want to be considering depending on how the meta goes um but yeah i mean if a lot of people just aren't respecting or not respecting that's the wrong word i think a lot of people are playing cards to beat that wind allies deck but if not a lot of people are playing that wind allies deck Definitely going to influence how what deck decision I make for the regional season. I think there are some really good decks that would have um, good matchups into the meta outside of specifically uh, the Grand Allies match. Melbourne is about two months away. Nice, yeah. I actually participated in the last uh, Melbourne regionals, even though I'm from USA. I just I, kept, I basically happened to be in Australia around that time, which was funny because that was my first time ever going to Oceana. Um, I will not be going to the Melbourne Regionals this year, unfortunately. But uh, Dallas one's really soon. I think I'm just going to try to judge. Don't think I'll actually have enough time to be competitive. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I think a lot of people will also just kind of fall into what they were playing in set format maybe. Um, because yeah, you, you just, there's kind of in a way not that much time to prepare. Um, Realistically, deck building in this game is very com complex. Uh, and so if you don't have like a ton of free time, if you're only able to play in like one event a week um, and then maybe like get together with some friends or like test online like one other day, um, you know, that's, not, that's not that much time to prepare for an event that's two or three weeks away. So uh, definitely, definitely does shape the meta as well. That's 
Out of round two, go. We played against a little bit of a newer player. They were on a they were on like a list that's really similar to Dan's, his ninth place bubble deck, the hybrid fire deck. Uh, and it was just a it was a quick match. Um, super nice player. Uh, just cards didn't go his way. Flame sweep draw four is pretty good. It turns out, yeah. Uh, I just feel like allies are a pretty important part of this meta, and flame and fire, Lorraine level two is still the best way to deal with allies, I think. So that's that's basically why I'm on my deck tonight. I only see rules and information in your Discord right now. You have to go to... Welcome? If you go to... If you go to the rules channel, you thumbs up it. If you thumbs up it, the rest of the content should uh, be unlocked for you. You can see 193 people have thumbs up it. It's because everyone's got a thumbs up it. <laughs> Better read them and click the button. Roll. Yep, yep. This is bad. I'm already hungry. <laughs> it's, it's, we haven't even finished round two yet. We're not even headed into round three. We're still at the tail end of round two. Which, uh, yeah, man, what, we've got like 20 more minutes still or something? Yeah, we got 20 more, 21 more minutes, minutes of round two. And I'm already hungry. I don't know what it is about being on stream that just makes me hungry. Like, I felt like I ate so much in that 24-hour stream. I was just constantly eating, I felt like. On a pretty spicy Lorraine list, till then, so I gotta practice. Yeah, it's, it's all about practice, man. All about practice. Can't find the Yeti Gaming Discord. Uh, come join our server. Go into the general chat. And um, it's like pretty much the the first message you'll see. The link to their server. Another big thing is I don't have all the cards in the new deck I want to run. Water, Luxem, Xander. It seems like I have potential if there's a lot of aggro though. Um, yeah, we had someone play... Kind of Water Lux and Xander, not really, but we had. Excuse me, sorry. Um, we did have someone play a Water Xander build in our twenty-four hour stream tournament, and yeah, I mean, it definitely, you know, Water is in a much better place now. I don't think anyone would argue that Water did gain a big tool in Scepter of Lumina, and um, I think Average slash Reckless getting hit did help it as well. So Water Lux and Xander is absolutely a deck that could be explored, but it's uh, it's definitely a deck that takes a lot of deck building and also even more importantly, a lot of uh, practice. Um, you have to rep it a lot to learn those play lines, depending on the situations you find yourself in. Uh, if you do need singles, my store on TCG Player is Supreme Slabs. That's like my own personal store. Uh, and I I get orders in the mail within 48 hours of order. Um, and I try to do it quicker than that. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty good at getting mail out on time. I have basically every card in the game in stock. Um, the only time I don't have something in stock is if I just uh, I forgot to add more quantities. But right now I have every card of the game in stock, like physically. So uh, yeah, you know, feel free to go check that. Go check, go check TCG player, type in pretty much any card in GA, find my listing, um, go shop by the seller. You can order a whole deck for me and I'll get it shipped out really soon. Especially if you message me and say like, hey, I need this by a certain date, um, I'll really prioritize getting your order up. My mate gave me a game with the deck last night and just try to play the deck blind and he just scoops. Yeah, that's not really a deck that you can just like play. Uh, definitely bought from you at least a couple of times yeah uh i think i think i sold to a lot of people in the ga community um again i have like pretty much every card listed so uh a lot of people do end up buying with me i i just i frankly don't get the time to update my pricing too often i barely keep up with like updating quantities um so sometimes i am a little bit more of an expensive option um but i make up with it with you know trusted seller not gonna scam you uh, I try to do fast shipping and I have like everything in stock. So 
I don't have four cent commons like some of these other stores do. I don't understand how they do that. I, I really have never understood that in, in the buying and selling world. Um, don't get it. Um, but yeah, I try to keep relatively low pricing and uh, good service, good inventory. Great if you like playing best of one. Yeah, it's uh, Water of the Lux and Xander is a best of one deck. I think it's for sure. Living the dream, Kevin. Do you live off selling cards? So, all right, we got time. Let's go. Let's go a little bit into my personal history. So, I um, started playing card games in middle school, which is why when I say like I've been playing card games for ten to fifteen years, it's because like can I really count the middle school years? Because uh, it was me being broke because I was in middle school. Didn't no one had money in middle school, and I started with Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and fortunately, Yu-Gi-Oh! actually does have some, like, really cheap jank decks. Trust me, I was not winning locals even. Um, but I was able to put together decks for my, like, $10 budget, basically. Like, I had a friend that got me into Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, he essentially just gave me a ton of bulk. And I just tried to build any coherent strategy that I could. Because, um, like, I literally, I literally probably spent, like, 50 bucks on Yu-Gi-Oh! in the first, like, year that I was playing. Like, it was no budget at all. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, I was playing every week. Me and my friend were playing, like, very often. So I was, like, grinding for sure. Um, but I was also in middle school. You know, like, didn't really know what I was doing still. Like, didn't have good strategy for sure. Um, and so I played from, like, halfway through middle school up until the end of high school. Played Yu-Gi-Oh! that whole time. By the end of high school, I was definitely starting to, like, win locals sometimes and, like, um, was still wasn't able to like travel to a lot of events cause I was in high school. So, uh, still broke and, you know, couldn't, couldn't fly to events and things like that. So I would go to like regionals when they were in Michigan, um, and never had like a particularly impressive record. Uh, cause I was still, I was still under a bit of a financial cap anyways, going too far in depth on that. Um, so yeah, played Yu-Gi-Oh for, you know, like five years or something like that. Um, took a little bit of a hiatus, uh, after high school. Um, I can't remember what card game I played afterwards. I think it was Pokemon. I, pl I played Pokemon for a few years. Then I took the hiatus. So it was, it was Yu-Gi-Oh, quit Yu-Gi-Oh because it was a very, at that, at that point it became a very expensive game to try to keep up with just with how the Yu-Gi-Oh economics worked. They basically made the tier one decks high rarity in their newest sets. So you'd have to buy cases or spend hundreds on singles to um, get that full deck. And then the next set, they'd print a counter to that deck in another high rarity thing. And then they'd reprint it all in tens to make you buy their tens. And that crashed the secondary market value. So it was just not a good game to play financially. So I got out of that, got into Pokemon. Um, played Pokemon for a year, few years, met a lot of great people doing that. But uh, really disliked the gameplay. I would travel to League Cups, you know, drive two hours, go to League Cup sit down, start my round one, draw six energies in a Pokemon and go, great, play my Pokemon out and lose within a turn or two. Uh, and that just happened to me too many times to enjoy it, just to be frank. Um, so I got sick of Pokemon for a while, got married and took like a year or two off uh, and then got back into Pokemon for a bit, mainly because of uh, my friend group. And the, the friends that I made in Pokemon, I, I miss a lot of them. Want to get back into that. And didn't really have any close friends that were playing any other card games. So I was like, ah, I miss card games. Let's just get back into Pokemon for now. Um, I also was buying and selling Pokemon full time at that point as a career, which I'll touch back on later. Um, so that's just like what made sense. Played that for a few years. Got really sick of it. Stopped. And I, at that point, had a friend that um, wanted to play DBS, like super competitive. Because that's what I was looking for. I wanted to start like really getting competitive. So I picked up DBS because uh, I had played a little bit of that before as well, like a, like a year while I was also playing Pokemon or something like that the first time. Um, and so, yeah, I played DBS for a year, like exactly a year actually. And I, I started grinding that game really crazy. Now, the thing is I got into DBS when there was already like 15 or 16 sets out. And they don't do rotation. So it was a monster to try to learn the card pool, the game, and, like, deck build. It, like, just, like, everything about it was really hard to get into. Like, when I got into DBS, there was, like, 
eight, nine pages of like band cards and like limited cards and like erratas and stuff like that of like each one. Like it was, it was insane. Like it took me a week to just get through learning what cards I couldn't play and what cards were errata to actually like mean other things and stuff. Very, very new player unfriendly. Um, but anyways, I slogged through, I had a dedicated friend that wanted to play very competitively. And so I just went with it and, um, I actually ended up doing really well. I played in the first event of the season after only playing for a month or two. And I got my nationals invite right away. Uh, top eight, fantastic experience for me. Um, continue to play in all these regionals. DBS regionals usually hit about 100 to 200 people. And I would top eight, like a third of them, which was really good for a newer player. Uh, and uh, eventually we reached nationals invite. That was about a year after playing. And I decided I'm gonna really try for nationals. And so I practiced every single day for a month straight before nationals with my testing group because I had grown from one friend that was playing consistently with me to three friends, in an, including me, that were all playing very competitive, like practicing, you know, multiple times a week and stuff. And um, so I took I took nationals very seriously, dedicated like four hours a day for 30 days straight before nationals, and um, ended up making day two with like all these players like. DBS had been going on for like five or six years at that point. And like 80% of the people in day two had been playing DBS for like three, four or five years. Um, so me like coming in basically as a newbie and making day two, that was a huge goal for me. And um, I completely threw it in my round one, missed the money prizing because it was a top 32 cut, but top 16 is like what actually got the real money, like the thousands of dollars with the cards. Um, and so that was pretty heartbreaking. Played in the 250 person side event that happened in, like after whipping top cut um, and going through some emotional times. And I ended up getting top four there. Um, so that was like really good showing by me. Really like it's still a lot of confidence that like if I practice really hard, I can do well. Um, Cause even to this day, I still don't think I'm a very good card player, but um, it showed that if I put in the work, I can make it. So that was a really good experience. And then um, I just basically got sick of DBS because the way that I lost in top four of that side event, that 256 person side event was I played against a card that I had literally never seen before. And it was like, I've been playing DBS every week, multiple times a week for a year. And I was still just like, not even aware of the card pool. Like, like, like it, that was just unhealthy to play that much and not like know everything. Um, and it just, it just hit me. Uh, and I was having some other problems with DBS. Also my testing group kind of fell apart afterwards um, because they had some very unfortunate experiences at Nats um, with judges and like just some other drama that I don't need to get into. Um, so my testing group fell apart. I just wasn't really happy with the game. So I hopped into One Piece cause I had some other local friends that were willing to try One Piece. This was like just when it was coming out. And I was like, all right, sure, we'll give it a try. Played set one. I actually met Terry in One Piece. So very glad that I did a little stint in One Piece and played One Piece for set one and set two. Um, by the time that set two had released, I was starting to be aware of GA and uh, quickly fell in love with that game. Um, like basically the moment I played GA, I was like, this is like the game that I want to play. And Set two in One Piece had some really bad issues. Um, won't dive too deep into that, but I knew I had to get out of One Piece. Um, really fantastic for someone that wants to play a lot of events, and the prizing was also really good. So, like, as someone that wants to like go competitive, it, it was my first game that I decided this is what I'm going to try to do for a career. So, DBS Nationals. I um, also I'm not like missing the round, right? I, I got plenty of time still. So. Where am I? I'm not in the Yeti server. That's why I can't find round time. I have eight minutes, so okay, we got time. I can I can talk a lot, so we probably won't finish the story, but um Yeah, so One Piece was the first game that after that nationals experience with DBS, I was like, okay, if I actually dedicate the time to a game, I think I can like achieve results. So I decided with One Piece that I was gonna make it my career and practice like crazy and like actually try to make a living by just competing in tournaments and kind of actually did pretty okay. So um, set one, there wasn't really any events, so you couldn't really do much in set one. And then set two, uh, well, there was some events at the end of set one, like middle or end of set one. Um, yeah, that's not true. I literally did, there were the treasure cups. There was like five or four treasure cups. I was able to attend two of them. 
I got top 64 in Canada and made like a thousand bucks selling my prizes. And then I went down to Miami and I got second place overall, losing only to Andrew Duvall, both in Swiss and in Top Cut, who, if you don't know who that guy is, Google his name. His accomplishments are insane. Like he is a crazy card player. Um, and so to only lose to him in Swiss and Top Cut, again, gave me more self-confidence. And I ended up making like over $10,000 from getting that second place in that event which was really fantastic and so like only with like two or three months into my career i made ten thousand dollars from just one event and i made money from other events as well not anything like significant but you know like enough to pay some bills and stuff um that was a really cool cool experience so i was like okay like i'm gonna stick with like playing card games competitively but then set two meta happened with one piece and there was just so many problems with that i decided to hop off one piece it was also about the time that i found ga and i was like immediately hooked and started playing GA right away. And so, uh, yeah, basically started grinding GA fairly heavily. And I got uh, Terry, who I met in One Piece, um, who had became part of our team uh, to also get interested in GA. And I had made my brother-in-law, Isaac. So Terry and Isaac, you guys know them. They're part of TCG. Um, the, he had also gotten into One Piece. And uh, I was like, yo, you know, like we all, we all quit One Piece at the same time, basically. And I was like, all right, guys, I know you're probably not ready for another card game, but you have to check this one out. And uh, yeah, we, we all, uh, Terry and Isaac started a little bit later than me. I started like pretty hard in Alter release um, and playing in the TTS events before that as well, one or two of those. And uh, I went to the Florida regionals. I went to Australia regionals because I happened to be out there. I played in the TRA con event as well and got second place in Australia, third slash fourth place in um, Florida and have done pretty well in some TTS events as well. So I was starting to have a pretty good career in GA. And then most of you guys know that Ascent happened. Uh, us three did the same thing that I did for my DBS Nationals experience where we just played every single day, basically um, multiple hours a day before Ascent for a month. And that practice paid off. And I ended up taking first place at Ascent, which um, is quite a lot uh of financially if you want to play this card game competitively it, it's a really good start to your year um and so it's it's going to allow me to continue to focus on competitive play um and isaac got second place uh which he quit his job i'm pretty sure he's pretty open about that sorry if you're not isaac um but he quit his job uh and he's also pursuing like career competitive play and then terry got fifth place so we did like almost the unheard of uh three team members of a three person team going first second and third seed of the last like four rounds of swiss or something like that and then and then going into top eight because we're the top three seeds and getting first second and fifth after that like it was absolutely unbelievable um and so everyone on our team won a bit of money and uh that's gonna go towards funding travel for like future sense because Terry, Isaac, and I are planning on going to every single Ascent or higher level event. So every Ascent, we will try to be there. All three Nationals, we will try to be there. And hopefully we'll qualify for Worlds and play in that event. And if we don't qualify for Worlds, there's an Ascent at the same weekend. So like I said, we're going to be at every Ascent. We'll be there as well. So um, we are all three on the path of competitively playing this game. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of the story. So... When I say 10 to 15 years of, competitive, of of card play, you know, it's it's 10 years of like actually trying and like being able to travel at events and stuff. Um, 15 years of casual, more casual play, including that Yu-Gi-Oh experience. And then about one year-ish of actually playing card games like very competitively, multiple hours, like every other day um, and like really trying to go for it. So yeah, that is, that is my goal uh, is to make worlds this year and make enough money just playing card games. So um, I've seen a ton of messages that I did not keep up with because I, I had to focus and get through that story. So I'm going to quickly go through those messages. So uh, living the dream cave and do you live off selling cards? Didn't even get to that. Um, we kind of did. It was related, but I'll answer that in a second. Um, don't give me starting starting on janky Yu-Gi-Oh! Because mine was the worst starting out. Uh, Edison format Yu-Gi-Oh! is still one of my favorites. Um, I've, I've basically decided to only play GA going forward. 
Like, if this game dies, I'm probably not going to play another card game afterwards. Um, but I really fully believe in GA. And it's also, like I said, my favorite card game out of, like, um, the past 15 years of playing card games. And I only mentioned the card games that I played for longer than a year. I've played a lot of different card games as well. Uh, there was Force of Will, Magic, uh, uh, like, a few others that I won't dive down the rabbit hole with. Um, but those all lasted for like three to six months, maybe nine months. So I just didn't really touch on them. And some of them were while I was playing other card games. So, but yeah, out of like the 10 plus card games that I've played in the past 15 years, GA is hands down my favorite. Um, your five o'clock shadow actually really suits you. Thank you, Lime. Um, Aussie's in the chat. I thought, I thought I'd taste the Vegemite. Uh, did I hear people are winning on Sylvie? Yeah, uh, dude, I drew round one against Sylvie. Uh, it was wild. It was, I was, I, I very... Very much need to get some games in against it. Um, yeah, well, Kyle, sounds like you have a TCG experience too, for sure. DBS is intimidating, not gonna lie. Yeah, DBS is like really on, like, they're, they're, they're relaunching it for a reason. Also to have a friend group to play card games with. Absolutely. Um, and the cool thing is that like, online play has really grown lately in card games so even if you don't have local friends that are willing to like get into the game with you you can find an online friend group of people that are like willing to talk ga with you test and that's why i say like join the yeti discord join the true champion gaming discord join the main discord like there are people out there willing to enjoy ga with you do you play dbs fusion world no i'm just playing ga i'll i'll play edison format basically as a board game kind of thing not really like competitive um the cool thing is that there's actually kind of a circuit growing with edison format Yu-Gi-Oh. but uh yeah i'll play that casually when like there's maybe a dead time in ga like um post an event pre ban list something like that <laughs> i remember when i was 38 funny i don't know uh, i constantly forget how old i am i think i'm 27 28 But I don't like Whitebeard. Yeah, bro. Don't get me started on One Piece. Hopefully it's gotten better. I mean, they're on like set four or something now. So, you know, I, I quit in set two because it was just terrible. But I'm in round. So we still got five plus more minutes. Even Auckland. I was looking at Ontario, but damn, I don't know if I can get the time away from work. Yeah, yeah. We're going to Auckland and Ontario. Um, I... I Base, I kind of don't have a job. I, 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 I run my own business, so I can make time when I need to. Isaac quit his job, and he basically runs his own business as well now, and slash plays card games competitively, so he can make the time. And Terry is uh, Terry's going try hard in the game as well, so he makes the time for it too. So yeah, we're, we're making the time to try to go to every Auckland, or every Ascent. Um, super cool dude, wish I had competitive friends willing to go at it like that. Y'all sound like me. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, like there's people out there in the community willing to go competitive. Um, and, you know, like, realistically, like, not to toot our own horn, but, like, us also being co content creators is really good because I do think that we, we, we are the people making the most content out there. We have five weekly videos split between Patreon exclusive and publicly uploaded on our YouTube. And then I'm also doing this content of streaming the Yeti events because not everyone can play, you know, they get too late to, too, too, uh, late to home from work or something. Um, so we have six pieces of content being put out every single week. Um, and we're also very high level competitive players shown by Ascent. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm like not to sound self arrogant or something like that, but like you can gain a lot of value from our content because we are pretty open with what we share. Um, obviously there's some things like some decks and stuff like that that we have to keep hidden uh, to keep our competitive edge because that's important as people that play a lot and play competitively everyone is doing that um but i think we share a lot of content a lot of ways to improve at the game so you know like check out our patreon it's linked below um you know terry wrote a very extensive article that is absolutely worth reading if you want to be attending events and doing better at them um it's a basically a, a strategy guide about like our sideboard and matchups and stuff like that um as well as a tournament report from him but uh yeah if you want to improve at the game like Watch our content, watch our deck list, practice, play, play online, play in the Yeti events, find someone that was willing to talk Jay with you, practice Jay with you. Go check out the Patreon, read that article, watch the podcast, watch that, you know, just like let GA consume you. Um, and yeah, like it's, 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 it's good that we have a lot of high level players also being content creators. Cause not only is TCG content creators, uh, Limelight 
he's in the chat, um, is also another top eighter from Ascent, and he does content as well. Um, Main deck is really doing a lot of fantastic content. Um, he's absolutely pushed his Grand Archive contact more, more, more and more in the past month or two um, than he was, and uh, he. Uh, you can tell watching his videos and watching him talk in the discords and stuff you can tell he practices a lot and like knows what he's talking about um and so yeah there, there's like multiple content creators out there that are all like pretty competitive players that are all sharing their competitiveness with the community so even if you might not have like a team or anything there's a lot of ways to improve your game in ga right now uh i'm i'm super far behind in comments sorry guys um Does anyone know if there's a timing from when balancing the unit, uh, unit like Lunette with one health where she would be able to be ping like she balanced last turn and moved to my main? Don't know. I can't think about that right now. And I'm too late to help you, I'm sure. Yeah, we can't expect you guys to share everything. I'm the same. I won't share some things with my own mates. Yeah, exactly. Like that is a part of card games. And I think people are pretty understanding about that. This article is up on Patreon. Yep. And we even have a free trial on Patreon right now. So you can go sign up for our $10 tier. $10 USD tier might be different in your currency if you're international. Um, and you can go sign up for a free trial, go get all of our exclusive content. And if you enjoy it, stick around. Um, you'll get some free merch. You'll get um, continued access to all the other exclusive content that we would continue to post. Uh, we have Tuesdays and Thursdays um, exclusive Patreon content. So twice a week, you're getting exclusive content. And we're going to be posting additional times as well here and there so you might even get every other day basically like some patreon exclusive content um so it's definitely worth checking out we have had a lot of people sign up and we really appreciate that I, like can't stress that enough um and we've had barely anyone cancel so i do think that the patreon is very valuable um we tried to judge it based off other tcg patreon channels as well and try to match those same perks that we saw there and give additional content as well. So I really do believe that our Patreon is worth the money. And you can get um, access to most content on our $5 tier, and then you can get full access on our uh, $10 tier. So um, still super far behind on uh, comments, sorry. Uh, Lime is so cute when he's judging. <laughs> Uh, how do you guys think watermelon will improve? That is honestly what I'm slowly building, but I'm close to fire deck. It's going to take a lot of time and effort. I couldn't really touch on that yet. It just needs to be played. Um, a $10 super chat from Quicks. Thank you so much for the donation, man. I'm sorry that I was so far behind on comments. Uh, it took a little bit to get it. Money is no object to me. I'll skip the free trial. Bro, what a chat. I love that. Donates $10. And it's going to go join the Patreon and skip the free trial as well. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for the support. Um, super, super nice of you. Uh, Terrence Alonzo, what is your Discord? It is linked below in the description. It is the True Champion Gaming Discord. Oh, you're probably asking him what his personal Discord is. He's True Champion Cherry, Terry. Um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Quicks. That's super, super generous of you. Um, that'll... We're probably going to get the next pairing up here in a second, but that'll let me lead into kind of, yeah, like someone asked what my full-time job is. So uh, a long time ago, I started buying and selling Pokemon full-time, and that's kind of why I played Pokemon as well for so long. Um, and uh, yeah, I got really big into doing that. I started grading a lot of cards. Uh, long story short, made it my full-time job and had a, had a bit of success at it. Um, only did an online store, never got to open up an LGS cause I moved quite often and just the LGS wasn't in the, in the, it was, it wasn't ready for me yet. Um, I'm always keeping it as an option maybe one day, but, um, I don't think it'll be any, any time in the near future. Um, but you know what we're doing with TCG building this brand and everything, um, you know, we've put boxes up for order. You can go buy boxes, starter decks and cases of the newest set up on our website, truechampiongaming.com. It's linked below. Um, you know, like that's a first step as well, trying to build that up and, uh, you know, like, yeah, local game store could definitely be the play one day. I would love to do kind of what Yeti does and like really support the GA community and stuff. And that's much easier to do with a game store. I don't have that right now. I'm only an online store. So, you know, we, we try to really grow the GA community by like doing what Yeti can't and like being really devoted to content creation. We do put the most content out there because I want there to be, I mean, like 
we heard so many times that there just wasn't enough content out there for GA back when our channel was only doing like a video a week. And so we said, all right, we'll try. Please subscribe, you know, like make it so that we can actually make some money off of this. We'll launch our Patreon. And the community absolutely did get back. You know, like we've had a ton of Patreon content uh, or a ton of Patreon people sign up. We had a lot of people subscribe. And yeah, we, I mean, we have people like quicks donating money when we're doing on the live stream and like all of that really adds up and lets us afford to be able to put as much time into content creation as we can. Because like I said, we are, um, the biggest priority to all three of us is competitive play. Like that is number one, um, between content creation, competitive play and our jobs. Um, because even though Isaac and I are essentially self-employed, we still do have jobs. Uh, but content creator competitive play comes number one so we can't sacrifice time from competitive play if like we have to like the time that we spend in competitive play is always going to stay the same right like we're gonna have to spend x amount of hours to keep doing well and so the other amount of hours in our um day is split between working either content creating or in our other job so um the money that you guys give to us through Patreon and donations and all this other stuff, or just even if you can't directly give money, like subscribing and stuff like that is what lets us spend more time on content creation. I think our next round's up. Oh, Isaac, are we playing? Yeah, we're playing, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I'll turn your stream off because, you know, that might be a little cheating, I feel like. Yeah, I, I would appreciate it if you didn't look at the stream. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hopefully, yeah. we won't be able to hear each other from uh, across the room. Uh, if for those of you that don't know, me and Isaac are literally playing in the same house right now. Yeah, I'm gonna cut his internet, guys. <laughs> I don't know if they can hear me at all, but. Uh, yeah, they 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 were saying that they can hear the other person, so your audio is good to go. Um, also, right. Quicks donated ten dollars, so uh, shout out to him, man. I saw. Yeah, thank you, Quicks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it a lot, actually. Nice feature match from <laughs> Andy says, yeah. Right now. Good. All right. Uh, I'm assuming half cut's good, high dice roll, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess, man. I don't know if I trust you, but sure. <laughs> all right, five. We got uh, two. I got seven. Yep, sounds good. You're going first. Good luck, man. You too. Is Isaac 2 0? I'm not sure. Are you 2-0 or are you 1-1? One, one? I'm 1-1 one, one like you are. Ah, uh, gotcha. Makes sense. That's why we got paired. Uh, Isaac is 1-1. One, one. Both of us out of that winner bracket. Easy win for Isaac. Cuts Kevin's internet. Yeah. True champs in the house. It's so funny because we were joking that we were we would somehow play, even though this is a 40-man event. 40-man event, four rounds. Uh, only Isaac and me are playing, not Terry tonight. So it was pretty unlikely for us to get matched, but... It happens. For Lunette, Frost Priest, and Pat. Do I have eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Apostle is so annoying. Can't get over how annoying that card is. So what we're gonna do okay. Plan. is go one, two, three, flame rune. I'll just play flame rune and rest because of a Luna effect and I'll pass. Sounds good. So I do have blazing throw and tempered steel in hand uh, with a creative hand. shock. Four. So honestly, what I might do is um, Creative Shock, my Tempered Steel away. Oh, I can't. Never mind. I don't have enough cards for that. Well, we'll, bubble. we'll probably Creative Shock no matter what. And, and, um, and draw. maybe get a Floating Memory off the top, like a Chad. Um, and then uh, Materialize a Sword either raw or by going into level 1 and probably Blazing Throw away that sword to kill that Lunette. Because that Lunette has to die. Um, Lunette is one, crazy strong. Two. Three for a Gildas. Oh my gosh. Three, four into the uh, Flame Rune. Yep, Flame Rune dies. Alright, and then we'll swing one face. Take one. And go ahead. Alright, uh, I'm gonna create a shock in your end step. 
So we could have deflecting there to try to keep the flame rune alive, but I think actually no, it would have just died anyway. So hopefully we get a floating memory here and we do like a absolute Chad. Discard stalwart from the blind creative because I'm the best player I ever, Isaac, and you just can't beat me. Um, I'll go level one Lorraine. Too easy. <laughs> uh, sword of seeking. We collect draw. So do here. I also, I also kind of just want to. Now we have two blazing throw in hand. We have to use the blazing throw, I think. Um, I'm going to also try to kill Gildas. And so I think I'm going to use my Rending Flames to do that, which sounds wild, but I kind of don't have good options. I guess I could go Hasty and Banner Knight. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go one, two. I'll go Hasty and swing. Oh, right. Lunette's out. Oh, my gosh. All right, Isaac, I'm going to take that yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. We're going to pretend that <laughs> I didn't do that. Um, I got way too ahead of myself with my lines. Uh <laughs> We're going to swing one with Lorraine into the Gildas. Okay. And then I'm going to Blazing Throw the Lynette. Uh, yeah. Uh, on response, I'm going to pop Bubble mm. and draw. He's going to lose balance, but he might keep the Lunette uh, alive. And yeah, if he does... Fine. Okay, never mind. Um, even though it only has one health, I wouldn't be able to kill it because everything would kind of run rested. Uh, we'll play a hasty now. Uh, I'll swing one into Gildas. Sounds good. Discard tempered. Draw. Uh, discard temper from that uh, hasty, by the way, and then play Banner Knight. Any response? Um, yep. Uh, nope. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I just, I lied. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I'll swing into the Gildas trying to kill it. All right. Go ahead. Good. All right, well, that went... I did not think that that was going to go that way. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I did not think that that was going to go that way. Uh, we have two floating in drop with four fire as well. So uh, we will go... could set up a pretty big... Uh, Terra Frank. Level two turn uh, or something. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, we could, we could do some crazy right, damage. Yeah, we'll go Terra Frank. And then we will... Recollect and draw. Turf is going to slow us down a little bit, so we need to start we thinking of how we can just do a setup turn instead, which I think we have one, an okay option. Two, three down for an Imperious Highlander. Um, you have Bro, two, are you actually unit. playing this card? Holy crap. Okay. Swing three into Banner Knight. Yep, it dies. Uh, you're wild, Isaac. <laughs> and then we will go... This man is playing uh, Imperious Highlander, dude. We don't put down three for Korhazi Trapper, and we will pass. Dude, that's actually a crazy strong turn. Can you remind me how much Highlander costs? Is it four cost? It's a three cost. Okay, that card's not three as bad cost. as I thought then. Yeah, it's three cost, two, two. Actually makes sense, dude. Respect. That's a good, uh, good idea. It's how I had to get this deck to get back in the game if it's ever behind. So the Trapper's a really big problem, actually. Because now it's going to be really hard to utilize my level 2 effect. So I'm going to do something really silly. How many cards in memory? Five. Okay. I'm just going to make a ornamental gray sword. And I'll give Hasty the buff counter. And then I'm going to move to a collection. Anything? Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I'll pop. Okay, sounds good. I'll draw. Yeah, dude, Isaac's, Isaac's definitely showcasing some pretty cool stuff. I do, unfortunately, have the Blazing Throw. Um, uh, I'm just, like, literally drawing every Blazing Throw when I need it this this game. Um, so we're going to go... I'm not going to Rending this turn. I'm just, I'm just going to Blazing Throw the Trapper away. On response, I Ooh. will uh, remove that counter and minus two to the, the, the Hasty. Sounds good. I get it. So this probably signifies to me that he doesn't have another trapper in hand. Um, otherwise, he might want to leave that prep counter on there. But this was a good play. Um, so we're just going to play defensive, which is going to be set two down for shield mate and pass. Okay. So 
So we got through his Terra Fring that turn um, and also got rid of a really defensive card on his side of the board um, and then also set up our own defense. So overall, that was a uh, really good turn for us. It's one in hand, three in memory. Um, and we're still sitting on two floating memory uh, in the drop, which is really good because now, now that that Trapper's gone, we can do our level turn two play. And he has to respect Flame Sweep because we could have enough. Um, we don't have Flame Sweep. But uh, he definitely has to be thinking about it at the very least. I remember buying 10 foil Highlanders for 5 cents each. That's insane. I would do that all day. I'm going to go into Scepter. Oops. Stuff was there. And we're seeing the uh, one through six. place of water. Sorry. Didn't see that. Four. Imperious Highlander. We will recollect. I actually think Imperius Highlander is nuts in, in that deck. Whistling two into the stalwart. Yep, it dies. And now we have three floating memory in here. So even though it looks so like we're really low on resources, we're we're one, doing alright. Two. Three for Krahazi Trapper. Getting a prep counter, and we will pass. Killing me, bro. That's insane. Yeah. Bro, what do I do? I don't have any more blazing throws. Cards in hand and memory? Two in hand, three in memory. Alright, at least we're pretty close on resources. But uh, that scepter is super annoying. I feel like this, uh, that, that trapper, dude. Holy crap. I'm gonna banish uh, shield mate for smoke bombs, and then recollect and pass. Or sorry, not pass. Recollect and draw. <laughs> sorry, my oh, bad. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna attempt to swing one into Imperius Highlander with hasty on attack trigger. Is that fine? Yeah, yeah. If okay. the, the trigger goes through, yeah. Song of Frost can stop that, but I don't, I don't think you have enough cards in hand anyways. I'll discard a Tempered Steel and draw a card. All right, we have, we have some options now. And I think this is hard. What the heck? What the heck? All right, but I think, I think this is the proper play. Probably isn't, but oh well. I'm going to attempt to rending the Trapper with uh, Lorraine. Yeah, on response, I will remove three. Oh, wait, oh. Yeah, so yeah, so, it, so any response to the activation of the card? Yeah, I want to remove three, so you do three less for your, for your attacks. Okay, then I will banish th three. Oh, right, yeah, that's, oh, dang. That is a really good out, isn't it? Yeah, all right. Um, I'll just activate Raining Flames. You do nothing, and then you tap so you can't retaliate. Um, and I use the card to get rid of the prep counter. That's insane. Um, I will pass. Go ahead. Yeah, I thought, I don't know why I thought I could banish three and then still kill the Trapper because it would do six. Obviously, the three is negated. Um, but yeah, I just like really need I to get go... rid of that Trapper um, effect. Because otherwise, it's just gonna in inhibit every single play I make. Sure. I think Corhazi Trapper, and like we've started to test water a little bit, has been my favorite water card. Um, it's it's really ridiculous how strong that card is. Drop on the hasty prevents it from declaring an attack right since it has zero attack. No, you can always declare an attack with a card. Yeah, let's go GCR. We will recollect. We will draw. Uh, I went smoke bombs because swing two into the hasty. I will smoke bombs. Okay. That's why I went smoke bombs. <laughs> we will pop. GCR. I love Isaac Stack so much, dude. For real, it's actually crazy. 
Not yeah, no class bonus on Trapper, dude. We uh we didn't even rate that card high when we did FTC either. Dude. But to be fair, we didn't rate a lot. I don't know. For Corhazi Trapper. Dude, you're killing me, man. <laughs> dude, this is so it. oppressive. We will fling one face. This is so oppressive. And pass. What the heck? This is so oppressive. Cards in hand in memory? Three in hand, three in memory. Bro, he's got so much resources too. This is so hard. Um, I have a couple different plays I can do, but I really don't like any of them. So we're just gonna do. And this all like really sucks actually. Um, I need to get rid of Trapper Token, which is basically impossible because I need to kill two Trappers now, which is insane. So I just need to get rid of as much board as possible. It's hard. Um, yeah, I think I need to go that, unfortunately. Yeah, what I need to. Have in the, uh... I have uh, Seeking and Ornamental already because I Blazing Throat both of them. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm going to go Empowerment and then uh, Recollect and Draw. Well... That even change anything? No. Three, two, two. Minus three, two, two. Yeah, that's annoying, but probably what I need to do. Freaking. Play uh, my hand down and play Banner Knight. Oh, thank God, no frost mine. Um, I'll swing Hasty Messenger into your active Korhazi Trapper for three. Uh, we will, yeah, we'll. Well, do you want to pop Crystal maybe first? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I can do uh, it. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you said you just said four three. So yeah, I'm sure, fair, fair, fair. Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, yeah, I'll rest and minus her damage. Yep, sounds good. So now we're in a weird position where, like, I actually don't care about the trappers too much because I think he's gone through three or four of them. Um, I'm gonna swing Banner Knight for two into Imperius Highlander because, like, um, if he has another trapper, that's yeah, the only way for him to use his effect, and that's just gonna like do it anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'll do two into the uh, life. Yep. Trappers are one three, right? Okay, yeah, go ahead. All right, I'm going to level up. I'm going to level one. So we're in a bad position uh, here. Take four two, damage. Four, five, six. Um, he yeah, has allies on board, and four. can probably clear some of our allies, but uh, this, 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 it was all we could do last turn. Uh, we will grab. Are there many ways to get prep counters at fast speed? No. I don't think there's any actually. So um, I believe that Trapper's probably his only way to actually get prep counters in this deck, um, because outside of class bonus is pretty hard. There are some cards, but um, I'm pretty sure Trapper's his only way to get prep counters. But yeah, it's a very strong card to put into a even a non-assassin list. I mean, I I. It's been doing so much against me this game. We'll just grab Sword of Seeking, sorry. And then we will recollect and draw. Also, so many three drops in his deck. It's so easy for him to keep Lunette and um, Gildas balanced. One, the Imperius Highlander is new. And I like it. Yep, we'll sounds good. With Gonna kill off a banner knight here. Into one of the banner knights, uh, the weaponsmith into the same banner knight, and Lorraine into the same banner knight. 
Yep, it's dead. Why the rain and counter, not, yeah. not? Oh, yeah, I want to have a counter. I'll yeah, you one. wanna, you wanna. <laughs> do you wanna take back the sword swing or? Uh. No, it's alright. Okay, it's all right. I'll go to seven tier two and then uh, go to my turn. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so Trapper's finally not able to do anything. I've been kind of waiting for a floating memory, or sorry, for a flame sweep, but I don't really know if I can keep holding out for one. Um. Especially with that, I have Banner Knight on board. I think I just probably have to go for it. Uh, except if I do that, I won't be able to actually even make any attacks with what's in my hand. So yeah, I think we're actually just gonna probably go GCR, which is wild, but I'm just gonna go GCR. Okay. So Banner Knight's not online. Um, we wanna just kill off as much board presence as we can. I think that's the name of the game right now. Although Scepter of Lumina is actually like threatening a massive amount of damage to me, which is scary. Um, but we're gonna go. Uh, swing Hasty Messenger at uh, Weaponsmith. I'm gonna discard Hone by Fire and draw a card. Okay. I like that a lot gonna do that play arthur uh swing two at the weaponsmith uh yeah i'll die then swing two at champion yep take it. go ahead one card in hand yes foreign memory Oh, mark the target is a way to get prep counters at fast speed, isn't it? Yeah. What do we have here? Yeah, Isaac Sec Isaac Sec is so cool. This Isaac Sec would have honestly been he should have streamed tonight instead of me. It would have been more enter entertaining to watch. I didn't even know that he had pit. So I, I've, I've tested against Isaac Zach a little bit so far. Um, and I didn't know that he put in the Imperius Highlanders. It's uh, definitely a good change for the deck, I think. It was um, something that he was talking about is needing, you said needing more, more better allies. Uh, yeah, one card in hand, four in memory. Okay, I'm going to go to level two. Ooh. Okay. And we will deal four damage to you. Two to 11, draw per turn. We will put two down, and we'll banner knight. We'll swing oh, for wait. four. Have I lost? Yep. Yeah, I, I lost. For game. Yeah. Jeez. What did you What did you banish for level two? Uh, level two was Korhazi and Woodland. You I had the four You had the fourth trapper. That's insane. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Good game. <laughs> wow. Um, I could have made a play there to keep uh, the deflecting edge in hand, and I continuously have, uh not valued lumina enough it, it is always wild how much damage can sneak on board with lumina um so yeah that's completely my fault there uh i'm not sure if i could have actually won to be honest uh even if i did survive that turn because uh that damage was going to be pretty high no matter what so yeah i, I don't think i sideboard anything outside of the hero that cards yeah, I want I want everything. Uh no, I don't want rendings uh, for lantern fracture eyes, probably. I'm just gonna keep them in anyways. Um if anything, three damage attacks to help clear board is good enough, to be frank. Well played, Isaac. Um, I will think on whether or not I want to go first while I shuffle, I guess. I actually don't know. Sure. Um, Isaac won that one. He had Scepter out, and so he just did this big, um, level up into level two, deal four damage, drop Banner Knight, and just swing like crazy. Um, a very significant amount of damage that I wasn't prepared for. 
Um, I've lost to water multiple times like that. Um, Scepter of Lumina really does do some crazy stuff. I don't know whether or not I want to go first. Uh, yeah, I, I want to go first. Actually, I do want to go first. Um, I can't let him balance Lunette. I can't let him balance Lunette like he did that game. Uh, I was lucky to have the Blazing Throw, but it becomes a really we big issue. We should have set up where we just play across from each other with a top-down camp. Yeah, we should have. That would have been better. <laughs> Alright, draw seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. I'll just pass. Go ahead when you're all ready. So my hand is Deflecting Edge, two Gildas, Hone, Flame Rune, and double Creative Shock. And so I could just open up with like a Gildas um, and then follow it up with a Flame Rune next turn so that Gildas is balanced. And I can swing for six damage, which is like a pretty good play. But since I have that Flame Rune, I think what I'm actually going to do is discard the Flame Rune off the first Creative Shock, then do another one, um, and really take this time to play my, my Creative Shocks. I think that's probably the only time I'll get. Um, I'm probably going to regret this play if he plays a uh, Lunette, but the nice thing is I do have that Hone by Fire, so if he does play new Lunette, I can go a sale, or, um, Adversity with Hone and actually have enough for a uh, to kill that off. Uh, I'm going to go Creative Shock. Alright, I changed my mind. We are, we are not, we are still going to discard Flame Rune, and then I'll play another. Discard a Stalwart Shield Knight. So we got lucky there and got a generic floating memory. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I will go level one. I'm going to banish this. We're going to go Lorraine. With sort of seeking and the cool thing is here that we could actually attempt to kill this lurking assailant with hone and sort of seeking um i'm gonna give up one two three four five six seven eight i already have eight so i can't balance skills anyway so that's just what we're gonna do i'm gonna hone the sort of seeking give it an additional two damage and then declare an attack onto lurking assailant Yep. Three with choose sight. I will I will deflecting edge, deflecting edge. I will choose not to retaliate, not to retaliate. Okay. Interesting play. Um gets rid of a deflecting at least. I gain a card in that exchange, but uh one down, one down, one down, one down, one down. I come through. You might want to unplug and replug your mic. Um, the nice thing is here is that we can recover because we're just going to play our own Lurking Assailant uh, and pass. And so we're just going to, we're just going to, yeah, this is actually a really good play. I'm just going to play my own Lurking Assailant uh, and pass. One second, I have to disconnect and reconnect because I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep, all good. Um, I'll just play Lurking Assailant pass. One in hand, five in memory. So the nice thing is, is that, you know, I mean, we have three Gildas in memory. We really need to start playing these and letting him deal with them and then just replaying them and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to be able to probably control the board a pretty decent amount with the Lurking Assailant and a Gildas and a Sword Swing and all that stuff. So um, I'm feeling pretty confident about our, uh, our position right here until he drops... Or Hazi Trappers out the wazoo. Which actually wouldn't even be that that good right now. That should be able to still kill them and maintain board control. I'm Down, no fairy, no lurking assailant. That's good. So, and snow fairy on the lurking assailant. 
I'll go to def yeah. deflecting uh, edge. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'll, yep, I'll pass. All right, try unplugging your mic again, by the way. Okay. <laughs> um, so I need to go into like a ring or a draw here to balance Gildas, which is probably just the right play. I kind of want to try to attempt to kill that Snow Fairy, which I could do by like leveling up or something, but that's probably just not worth it. Um. Yeah, I don't think it is worth it. I think I just need to go with the... Oh, yeah, because I'm not going to untap Lurking Assailant for as long as Snow Fairy's on the board. So, actually, I might want to just kill that uh, Snow Fairy. But if I do, I might not be able to kill the Lurking. I won't be able to kill the Lurking. It'll be one off. So, yeah, we'll just kill the Lurking and let the Snow Fairy live another day, I think. There's a way I can clear everything, actually. Um, it's a little risky, but we're going to go for it. All right, I'm going to go into level two. Um, I'm going to roll one through five and use my flame rune as well. One. Get rid of flame rune. Um, swing three into Snow Fairy. Uh, yeah, she'll die. Draw a card, and then I'm going to play a Strapping Construct. Uh, I am level two, so it has a attack buff. I will attempt to swing into the Lurking Assailant for three. Attempt to play Banner Knight. It'll leave me with zero cards in hand. Yeah, and I will cross mine. It's get, it gets banished, and I'll pass. I will go into GCR. I'm going to go ahead and turn Isaac down for you guys, um, since he's having some mic issues. Um, so you won't be able to hear him for the rest of the game. Uh, you got if, if if everyone's like no turn it back on I can turn it back on but I just figure that's better because it's it's annoying to deal uh, to listen to um I'll try to say anything I'll try to repeat back anything like super relevant that he says but um we're doing pretty okay here uh, we have four cards in memory so we are a little low on resources for sure um but you know we're at level two he's at level zero I'm gonna kill our lurking assailant here yeah. Man, that card is actually pretty decent. Sounds good. And he's just passing. So, um, a lot of cards in hand and memory still. He's definitely got the card advantage, but we have that level advantage. So, uh, and I think we'll be able to maintain board advantage with how this game is going right now. So, I have no floating. Um, probably just going to go ring. I could do something like um, tariff ring. I think I want it to go just straight up GCR at the moment. Go GCR, recollect, draw. Uh, I'll pop ring. All right, so I've got a pretty decent option here. I'm going to put two down for Banner Knight. I'm going to swing strapping construct into Highlander for four. I'll swing Banner Knight for one into you. First damage of the game. I'll put strapping construct down, leaving me with zero cards in hand. Swing four into you. Go ahead. So here's a here's a thing here. If he doesn't have the damage to clear both constructs his next turn, which would be a little hard to do. It's going to tell me that he doesn't have Frostbind because um, I have no way to interact with Frostbind right now. And Frostbinding off a 3-2 for my board is worth it for him right now, like for sure. The only way it's not worth it is if he has four damage he can do on his turn because he knows I have no interaction. So he might as well save the Frostbind. Um, 
So just something to pick up on. So if he only like clears one Strapping Conscript on my next turn, I'm going to know for sure he doesn't have Frostbind because he he wasn't thinking, oh, well, I'll save it here. You know, like, so th th this next turn is going to give me the read on if he has Frostbind or not. And this is why I like to stream this way. I think uh, this, this stream experience could be good um, because it's going to give you like a little bit more insight into like the lines of play and like the thought process and stuff like that because not everyone might think of, um, of how those interactions work. strong yeah so he doesn't have uh frostbind because he would have done it on his last turn pop bobble get balanced skill this kill the banner knight and now i only have one ally on board yep sounds good um sounds good so he just plays a Frostborn Paladin, um, no effect from it, kills off a Constrict. So i um, trying to take control of that board back, but we might be able to just keep on fighting it. Um, this is getting to the really bad point of the game where we just have a bunch of dead Gildas in hand because we didn't play those earlier. Um, so it might have been better to do that earlier in the game. And I was kind of feeling like that, but I just felt like the other options were a lot better at that time. So it was just hard. Uh, the construct right now guarantees me to kill one of his guys because he has nothing on board. But I need to find a way to deal three damage to the other one. That's pretty crucial. Um, and I'm not really sure how to do that. So I could go... Yeah, I just don't really have a way to do that. So I'm just going to draw. I'll go Water Bobble, Recollect, Draw. Pop bubble draw. All right, well, we got the flame sweep, which would sweep for three, so that's probably what I just do. Um, yeah, that's just what I'm gonna do. I can't not use sword and still kill both of his allies, so I have to use. I'm gonna flame sweep for three using sword. I'll swing three with construct. Uh, putting you to 11. Go ahead. Um, so he's probably going to clear my board now. Four memory, one in hand. So even though it might look like that was a really good turn, we're actually not in that great of a position. Um, he's winning the resource trade right now. Um, although, yeah, he's going to have to level up here because he's such low health. So we are going to get a lot closer on resources here, actually. Um, the issue is that what he doesn't know is, like, I have a lot of dead cards in hand because it's just all Gildas's, and I've run out of ways to really draw and um, get back up to, like, balance numbers. So... It dies. Yeah, so we really need to find a way to kill this um, Lurking, and I unfortunately might just have to go Adversity, play Gildas, kill it. Um, not really how I want to use my Adversity, but it's incredibly crucial that we kill off anything that he puts on his board. So that's just what we're going to do. I'll go Adversity, Recollect, Draw. Swing two into Assailant. Play Gildas, three in memory, two in hand. Swing one into Assailant. And I'll pass. Okay, so we at least got his board cleared. Um, still not really sitting pretty, to be honest.
Two in hand, yep. Um, I probably do use the Flecking Edge to save the guild this year, because we're so desperate for cards on board. Um, it's unlikely that he'd be able to fully kill out Gildas. Uh, and then I can go to Terrifying and play another Gildas and like start to really build up the board. Oh no, I can't. Gildas is unique. Yeah, this is a really bad position for me. Sounds good. I actually really did not want him to take a defensive turn. I needed him to try to kill off that Gildas. Um, so he's going to make me take two more for my attacks. So um, what I'm going to do here is... I'll go ornamental. This is going to allow me to at least get rid of the prep counter. Um, and end my whole turn. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I actually regret how I did this. Yeah, I really regret this. I'll pay two to swing Gildas into your trapper. It's a uh, four in hand, two in memory. Really bad turn for me. I'll put two down and attempt to kill it with uh, Blade Master. Yeah. I'll pass. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I mean... This this three guild this hand is really taking its toll on me. And it's awkward because like I almost want to use like deflecting to kill keep a guild this alive. But like just because I need to keep up tempo on the board and stuff. But I just really can't do that. There's another trapper. So I think what I'll do is I'll let the guildus die, and then I'm gonna play um Arthur Immortal. Yep, you're good. It dies. Uh, sword is at one counter, right? Oh, ornamental. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. I'll go Terra Ring, recollect draw. So Terra Ring, we're just bringing out because uh, I don't really have any other good options, but it's not necessarily what we'll play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we did get back up to seven cards somehow. Um because we took a turn off of actually playing anything from hand, and we just paid for terraforming cost. So I think just doing Arthur Rest, following up with Gildas next turn is a good play. Because um, if I play Gildas right now, actually, I might play Gildas now, let him kill it again. How many cards are in hand of memory? Two in hand, three in memory, so... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to play Arthur now. Play Arthur, four down, two cards in memory. Um, attempt to put his on enter on the stack. Any response? Okay, we'll make him immortal and then I'll pass. So we're not going to terra frame here. Um, I am going to bait Isaac a little bit uh, by holding it. So here, our Arthur is good. Um, the best he can do is Snow Fairy it, which is like still not even that bad for us. Um, and we have zero health taken out of 24. So even though he brought that dreaded Scepter in, it's not looking very scary. Sounds good. I'll restand. Um, almost tempted to just go for like a Smoke Bombs or a Drawn Blade, even though we have no floating, just because like, I'm not really scared of what I have to lose down, but I have a floating in hand. Um, I'm just going to go Crystal. I'll go Crystal, Recollect, Draw.
Yeah, I'm really glad I didn't do that. Um, crystal completely basically waste of materialization, but I'm very happy with what I drew. So one, two, three. I'm gonna pay three for a Gildas. And I'll attempt to swing two into a Korhazi Trapper. I'll attempt to swing five into the other Korhazi Trapper. Sure, I get you. Um, and then I will go um, Savage Slash on one of them and kill it. Yeah, I'll do the rested one. Yep. All right, and then I'll pass. Go ahead. So it's like kind of pointless to kill his um, Trapper there. Honestly, might have just wanted to go face, but... Uh, I'm feeling like the longer this game goes on, I'm the actually better I'm in. Except for this, he's going to put five down and draw two. So I'm just not used to the Scepter of Lumina card yet. At least I'm not going to take that surprise damage. No cards in hand, five down in, in uh, memory. The good thing is that now I have this Savage Slash, so I can use that with Drawn Blade, draw a card, and go back up to seven and uh, either balance Gildas or even you know, play the one from hand if he kills it. Um, I don't know necessarily which one he would go after, Arthur or Gildas here, because both are good targets. And we might literally go to the time. So he's playing Squirrel to balance off his Gildas. Yeah, he killed the Arthur, that sucks. We can kill both, actually. That's insane. Not what I was expecting. Sounds good. I'll go Drawn Blade using Savage Slash from Floating. Draw, recollect, draw. Um, all right. Uh, so three hand, three memory. Play a Gildas, any response? Attempt to kill your Gildas. Put two down, play Conscript. Swing three into Conscript. Or sorry, th yeah, three into Trapper. And then... I'll swing one into the squirrel. Go ahead. Um, so we are at the point that he can like level up and like uh, go off a of Gildas or something like that, but he's losing. It, it's a, basically a fair trade. He's losing two cards and then drawing one, and then I'm losing a card. So it's it's just a fair trade. I'm not really too scared about it. I'm probably playing this too slowly, though. I probably should have been going into face a little bit more. Sounds good. Especially with my ring out, I think I definitely should have been doing that. Going face a little bit more, actually popping ring instead of just sitting on it like I have been. I do kind of take a little bit too much of a control route in, uh, in game sometimes. Sounds good. Yeah, I should have been popping ring that turn. All right. Um, don't think we have any floating. Yeah, so let's get materialization, recollect, and draw.
Yeah, so we're just going to take a turn to play out another Arthur, I think. One, two, three, four. Um, play Arthur, only one card in hand, any response? Okay, I'll do his on enter, rest him, give him a mortal, and pass to you. So this is a turn that we'll obviously not do, Terraforming. Same situation that we found ourselves in before, where we just have an invulnerable Arthur, zero damage taken, 24 health, so we're just going to let him do stuff and then attempt to overrun him with Arthur. The only bad thing is, is that I don't have a single ally in hand out of five cards. Um, I do have a creative shock, so we might be able to dig, but that's going to take away from our tempo. Um, so not too fantastic. I might actually lose one from memory, even though we have floating memory in hand, um, and use my last card, which is the smoke bombs, just because it's very vital that we keep this Arthur alive. Um, it depends on what he has on his turn, because I do also have a deflecting edge in hand, so if I think I can get away with just using deflecting edge to keep him alive, uh, I might go for that. Um, deflecting edge and terraforming would probably keep him alive on the next turn, so then I can wait until I actually have a floating in memory to go for that smoke bombs, because we are very, very resource low. We have been for a while. Sounds good. So here he's just fracturizing his lantern, which is good for us, I think. Going into a big paladin, so we need to clear that somehow. We also have quite a lot of dead draws in our deck right now, which is very unfortunate. Sounds good. Um, this Frostborn Paladin is going to make it so that we actually can't attack with Arthur. Um, crazy stuff. Since his other unit has stealth and uh, Frostborn has intercept, Arthur would die. I'll skip materialization and recollect draw. We just drew another one of our dead draws in the deck. That's very unfortunate. Um, All right, we have a way to clear that Paladin, but I don't like it at all. I don't like it even one bit. Really not feeling any of this. Um, so many dead draws. Um, might be like literally my only way to do this though. Um, so yeah, we're going to go for it. All right, I'm going to declare an attack with Arthur into uh, Frostbinder. Yep, I'll do a Deflecting Edge in response. You want to or not? Okay. So two, yeah, you're all good. Two damage on the Frostworn. And then I'll go Savage Slash with my Lorraine to attempt to do the last two. Okay. I'll pass, go ahead. So here, that was like my only, literally my only chance of killing the Frostworn. So we just had to do it. And then now it's going to put a floating memory in the drop so we can go smoke bombs. And this turn, I'm going to go um, Terraforming to try to hopefully, I'll, I'll do Terraforming. Just, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, thanks. Um, just hoping that he can't kill the Arthur with Terraforming out, which, because he'd have to pay two for lurking, play something, and pay two for that attack, too. So if we keep the Arthur alive here, um, this is the only chance that we have of coming back into the game. And then we can go Smoke Bombs next turn to keep it alive another turn. And Banner Knight's actually the perfect out. It's going to buff the Assailant to three, and um, yeah, that's really unfortunate. Sounds good. Yeah, that probably loses us the game. I'll banish the Savage Slash to materialize smoke bombs. Uh, oh boy. 
basically another dead draw. Um, I'll put three down for rending and attempt to kill a assailant. Go ahead. Um, yeah, really not not uh, anywhere to go from here. We're out of materializations. Uh, I have three dead cards in my hand out of a four card hand. Um, I had to go for the assailant there instead of the banner knight because I can't let him keep a stealth unit up. Time do we have left? Oh, we have seven minutes. So much. Uh, take three. Go to forward here, eleven. Um, pretty much just had another dead draw. I'm gonna creative. This card home by fire. And I'll pass, go ahead. This is the only game where aggro versus aggro gets so grindy based control. It's weird, dude. It's really weird. It's really, really weird. And I think I took it too grindy. I think I could have gone a little aggro. Yep, take three. Take one. I'm not really, I honestly don't even know what my game plan is. Pick two. I need to draw like a scrapping construct or something like that. Uh, recollect draw. I drew a flame sweep, but like it doesn't really do anything. Two damage across the board actually does not. Um, uh, you could like. Op smoke bombs just a draw card, but that feels really bad. I think I might just need a rending his banner knight. Um just load him down and then hope that I I don't know what I hope I draw, but I'm gonna put three down for rending and target your banner knight. Two in hand. Yep, I'll pass. Go ahead. Yeah, so he's song across my rending, um, keeping his banner alive. I really don't know what I do from here. Take two. Take three. Take one. Like, there's no way for me to really increase my flame sweep. I have some defensive options in my hand, but I'm not really doing anything. Um, Banner Knight can't increase it. I really need to store it out in order to increase the flame sweep. I'm not going to sweep for more than two. Um, yeah, I think I really just need to see something like a construct or something like that. Sounds good. Skip recollect and or skip materialization, recollect and draw. I drew another flame sweep. Um. Yeah, you got it, man. So, I think I I think I needed to pressure your life a lot more in that mid game. Yeah. Um. I I tried to play the long. Yeah, I tried to play the long grind, and it really messed me up because uh, I don't have as much resources as you, as you in the long grind. Um, I ran out of swords, and that just made me have, like, I had, like, double hone and, like, just things like that that were just, like, yeah, like, literally dead cards once I ran out of swords and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I think I need to just press pu push that uh, tempo a little bit more. Got two wrapped up in the board trade.
Yeah. Um, all right. Well, your mic is still really bad, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, peace out for now, uh, and hopefully you can uh, try to fix it before the last round. Okay. <laughs> I need to I need to get out of that room because oh man, dude, listening to that mic for that whole time was torture. Um, no, but Isaac played really well. I think uh, I think I just missed realizing when I need to go face, which is um, kind of a hard thing in every card game. Most card games have that decision, and it can be tricky. You need deflecting when an ally retaliates. I thought deflecting prevents attack damage, which is when a unit declares an attack. So you can, you can, oh, I see what you're saying. Retaliation damage is still considered attack damage. Yeah. Yep, Danny was right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, interesting there. Um, yeah, I think I think it was really obvious that I should have gone face, and uh, I just didn't realize it. Um, I'm again, I'm much more the player that like I just need to grind games and practice a lot, and so um, playing against a lot of these newer decks, I'm not really realizing what I need to do. Um, Terry would be more the interesting person to watch at the beginning of a format because he can kind of like pick things up quicker. Um, but, uh, I'm definitely learning a lot of things playing against these water decks that have been giving me the most trouble tonight. And, uh, it's really just making me want to go back to wind allies, to be honest. Um, but, uh, water's definitely interesting. Um, we saw an aggro water from Isaac that turned into control because of how I was taking it. But that's just kind of what aggro does. Um, but yeah, like water, water really has a lot of utility now. Like that scepter does a lot for that color. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, man, it is already eleven thirty. We are almost done with round three. I think rounds about to get or times about to get called. Uh, and I am still starving. I I don't. I, this might be a theme that happens where I just always eat on stream. Um, I won't tonight. Uh, but. Uh, I don't know why getting on stream makes me so hungry. Sorry, just um yep. But uh yeah, very interesting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're all good. Um, I just muted you on stream eventually because yeah. it was just like, yeah. Um, I don't know why you ever had that. <laughs> dude, uh, Highlander, pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. That uh, really fit what you were trying to put it's in the, that deck. It's the only way that deck gets back in the game. Yeah. It is the sometimes drop away or attack. I like it. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. We probably have to enter the door prizes tonight. Don't forget to do that. Oh, how do you do that? Um, you go to door prizes and then you just click the okay. little thing here. So there's non foil ordinary bears, foil ordinary bears, and official grant archive play mat. So cool. Hopefully we win something there because uh, we aren't winning anything more than just a silver pack for tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> if you win Honestly. your last one, you can get uh, your gold pack. Okay, there it is. Yeah, three oh one. Three, yeah, yeah, three O's get uh, a gold pack or okay. two. Um, and you actually might get two because your tie will put you at the top of the list if there's extra gold packs to get. So yeah, you, you could get one or two gold packs and obviously the toys as well. Um, since I am a scrub lord in 111, <laughs> I am pretty much out of, the, out of the rankings for anything but my silver pack that we will still get for entry I and um, uh, giveaways. But uh, we should make a wheel that spins for what you snack on. I am so down for that. That sounds great. Start caving the snack wheel on stream. Yeah, I was like, I, I don't know why, dude. Every single time I stream, I just get stuck. Yeah, I'm sorry. That like, but that's just so annoying because then you just hear me eating on stream. <laughs> <laughs> I know um, someone joined. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny. Uh, looks like round three pairings are up. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. We just did oh, round three. Because I saw Isaac S. You're the future match. I was like, oh, good luck, bud. You're on stream again. And I was like, wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I think we still have like five minutes. Um, Danny says hi. 
Uh, yeah, Andy and some others were commenting on how cool your deck is, and I agree. Uh, very, very interesting deck. Um, how have you been feeling about it? It felt good. feels horrible when someone that line. Oh, really? Is that I, what that, you tied that, against? That's what I tied against. It's, yeah. it's the grindiest matchup. I won game two because I played Lunette turn one. It's oh, the same sure. scenario. Yeah. You play Lunette turn one, she's balanced. It's a 1-4. Um, he even zeppered it two times. Wow. Uh, but it didn't matter. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of tempo to lose, zephyring yeah. that kind of card. Wow, that's interesting. How I bet Imperius Highlanders probably felt pretty good in that matchup. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, I put the four of in that card is a four drop two plus one. Uh, true sight. Oh, true sight. You sideboard those? I put those in. The four of those. Are the Still water patrol. Yeah. Uh, never saw it. <laughs> so. Yeah. And yeah. Then, Highlander then, was really good. game three double green. Oh, but it doesn't matter. We went to time. Hmm. But he probably would have won that game three. For sure. Okay. For sure. Yeah. That, that is interesting, though, because, like, I do feel like Wind Allies kind of is starting to not be played as much. So, um, that is an interesting position for your deck, because obviously you can handle fire pretty well. Yeah. I. A couple other changes that are better. I think Savage Blaster is. Whoa, relax, Kaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty chill right now. I'm not, I'm out of the money, so just buy in now. Will there be a deck list at the tournament or not? Yep, yep. We'll um we'll post up the deck list. I'm not gonna do another at everyone tag. We've done three at everyone tags in our Discord in the past two days, which is very excessive. Um I think, uh, I guess we have a deck list. You do have a deck list area. I'll post in the deck list area. Yeah. I'll post there and be like, hey guys, this is what I ran at Yeti tonight and went uh, one two one with. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, yeah, so if you join our Discord in the description below, Champion Gaming Discord, we'll post that deck list in the deck list channel uh, of that Discord. You can see exactly what I was running tonight. Um, and uh, do you want to post yours? Do you want to share yours? Uh, Are you keeping well, that? It was fully on stream. Though. That's true. Yeah, we'll Why post not? Isaac's deck too, because um, that's definitely the more interesting one. I was, remember, I was trying to play like you, uh, like I didn't know your deck. Yeah. Um, uh, hard. So yeah, I brought on the Planet Answer in early. Yeah. And I was like, this one looks sketchy. Yeah. Because I know you don't run any. Yeah. Sure, but I, I was sitting on a fresh ride. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. it would be like as if you would play. Something to destroy. I don't know if you change it slightly to play. Right, right. But it plays something to destroy it, and then I can fracture it, then you want to be able to destroy it. And yeah. I, and then you lose the other. That's all I was waiting for. E like, honestly, even if you're not. Like, even if Lantern's not going to do anything, Fracturize Lantern is still giving you a mana rock and a floating mana. Yeah. It's still so good. Yeah. That's like every single water deck that I would build right now, it'd be my champions, and then nullifying Lantern, oh. and then Fracturize. That's, that's, not, that's not starting. Right. Oh, yeah, round about the start. So, chat, let's do that. Yep, go it off. I can't tell. Round about the start. <laughs> it might be later, chat. You're like off screen, but okay. like, Isaac's really struggling. Got the mat. <laughs> oh, wait, this camera. Top 32. Give in the mail. Very cool. Isaac's going to be building a cool mat wall display yeah. sometime in the future because we have quite a few mats. He's, he's got his mat collection started. Yeah, I've got sure. seven back here. Yeah. I feel like if you play GA, you have play mats. Like, there's so many cool play mats in GA. Um, it's really hard to not just board them all. Just have fun. Those were fun. Yeah. <laughs> Poppy's like, oh, I hang out in the in the dream room. Yeah. Uh, Terry is not. Oh yeah, Terry is selling his. Isaac is keeping his. Both me and Terry are selling ours. Yeah. Unless they sell for an obnoxious amount, but so far they haven't. So yeah. Oh, yep. so many people said hi. Hello. Sorry. I have like seven from regional ascent. Yeah, that that is that is what other people have said as well. It seems like everyone's really stockpiling maps up. It's it's hard. 
and we're like not even a year into GA's life yet. <laughs> it's gonna be funny to see like the collections that players after playing this game like three years competitively will have. Like Isaac. <laughs> yeah. Isaac's, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Isaac's <laughs> literally gonna be able to build a house out of mats. I, um, I sell everything else, but mats I like. I would definitely try my map for two lines thought CSRs. That sounds so memey, but like also so awesome. I don't know why our um pairings aren't going up. Oh, it's only been two minutes oh, since the I end of oh. Yeah, I I I thought it had been like seven. Which is like bro, two minutes after a round ends. Where's our pairings? <laughs> like that's so like um Normally, you know, it, it, it takes some people like five, ten minutes plus after overtime, which is crazy. Andy's always go on and on. Usually, like, well, I upgrade from rookie up status. Like 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> on our uh, website, you say I'm the rookie of the group. Yeah, yeah, which is like crazy because you are, but you also got second place. Like, yeah. you're, you, you, you're rookie based on time, but not on, like, yeah. you know, play scenes or something. I don't know. Yeah. Realization. Oh, I yeah. Play, play a bunch. <laughs> yeah, Isaac. Isaac has to do well at Auckland, and then he'll become a. Yeah, I do well at Auckland. Well, what 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 would we describe you as on our website? Then? Uh. Decent. <laughs> <laughs> You can go get second at Auckland, and then we'll say Isaac is our second place team. Uh, <laughs> second place. Team curse. Yeah. Uh, Copper player. Yeah. <coughs> we have uh, the big man himself is typing in pairings. Is he in chat? Yeah, Dude. Andy's been watching the whole oh, time. Oh, that's funny. All right, here we go. Round four pairings are up. Table three. Table three. I don't know who that is. What? All right. Ads. Bro, I haven't run a single one. Oh. Oh, buddy. Hey, how's it going, man? How's it going, man? Uh, just going to give you a heads up. We are live streaming this on YouTube. Um, so just to give you a heads up for that. And uh, are you good with like a two dice high roll and half cut and all that stuff? Perfect. Yep, sounds good. I'll roll for me first and then you afterwards. I'm just going to shuffle up first. Bro, I'm so bad at this uh, monetization thing. We had a... Uh... <laughs> yeah. I want to still need it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so basically we we need other people not to join because it messes up how the stream looks. Um, so they set up this match so that like um, I have a role that I can be in here. And then before each round, they give my opponent the role as well. Um, so that way we're the only two people outside of um, Andy that can uh, join in since he's the judge. A lot of people going in and out and messing up the, the UI. Okay. Uh, I think we're good now. Um, if he if the opponent is too quiet, let me know. But uh, it should be good. Haven hates money. Yeah, for real. I uh, I didn't run any ads and I scrubbed out of today's tournament. So really, really hate money. Okay. Um, should be good whenever. Sounds good. I'll do the dice rolls now. Okay. So eight for myself. And four for you. So I'll go first. Good luck, man. Okay. Good luck. Uh, I'll do a half cut here. Uh -huh. 
Yep, that works. And I am good to go. Yeah, got that. Why is that not working? Sorry, give me one second. Yep. There we go. Discord stream should be working now. All right, I am washed. I am mega washed. Okay. Um, all right, all set now. So I'll go Spirit of Fire, draw seven. I'll go Lurking Sail and pass. Water here. Go ahead and draw seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight per turn. Cabin wind name, dude. I know. I it's it's I'm playing fire like it's wind. Straight up. That's why I'm going into so many draws. <clears throat> Bro, all I'm playing tonight is water. So strong. What is this world? Play a stalwart shield mate. Ooh, foils. Uh, two do I want to use? I'll go ahead and put this down instead. Actually, I'll put this down instead. And then. No, he, he has sleeves on. <laughs> he has go sleeves ahead. on, they're clear. One. Which isn't tournament okay, legal, I'll but play chilling touch. Fine. Um, yep, I'll roll one, two, three, four, five, six. If that's good. Yep, that works. Roll one. Uh, uh, sorry. Look? Yep, that was a stalwart. I realized there's a that's lot of glare there. Yep. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Uh, we'll catch this to go here, um, and then I'll go ahead and pass with three cards in hand. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to. Hmm. For my hands. I think I'm going to uh, go GCR. Okay. I'll swing Lurking Assailant into Stalwart. Alert. I'll play Gildas, uh, three in memory, three in hand, so she would be balanced. Okay, just give me one moment, please. Clear sleeves are tournament legal? There's no way. That's just a... Okay. Mm, yeah. I don't like that. Uh, I'm going to swing four into you. Yep. One, two, three, four. And then I'll put two down for Banner Knight. Okay. And I'll swing one into you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and materialize. Yeah, I don't think tournament... Go I don't think clear one, sleeves should be tournament legal. Okay it does... With one floating. Because, like, if you have go literally one single here. speck of whiting on your cards, down. that's not marked. And, like, obviously people, um, I don't know, I don't... Um, oh, also my stalwart goes back to memory. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and pay three for a Capricious Lynx. Yeah, I, I would never um, bring Claire Sleeps to a tournament. You're just asking I'll to get an accidental um, feeding infraction. And plus one oh, I just damage. got wrecked. And I will attempt to swing for four across the board. Yep, sounds good. Bro, I'm just never going to beat Water Sylvies. I my turn with zero cards in hand. <laughs> I just literally got wrecked, guys. Um, I'm just going to... All right, sounds good. I'll go Water Bobble and then Recollect Draw. Yep. Ooh, wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm just going to play this Gildas that I top decked. I'll play a uh, Gildas, uh, three cards in memory in hand. Okay. 
I'll swing four into champion. Okay. I'm not going one, after two, that. Three, four. Links again. We're going face, guys. We're going face. We're gonna finally play like a red player. Um, pop bobble draw. Yes. Put three down for flame rune and swing two face. Okay. One, two. Face is the place when you play red. I'll pass turn. Okay. Um. Okay. Finally playing like a red player. Uh, they are tournament legal in only the most basic sense. Okay. Like, if you played um, clear sleeves at Ascent, you get in trouble I or regional will... or anything over local. Okay, That's interesting. I, I know my hands have to be on the mat the entire time. I dropped my card there, so... You're good, um, dude. I'll Don't stress it. Go to restand here, and um, I'll actually go into materialization. I'll go into Allen level 2. Oh, dude, look at this one. drip! And then if you would like to roll, I'll just do a quick shuffle here. Sounds good. And we'll go one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, roll the two. Okay, so we'll start from here, the one, two here. And we banish Song of Nurturing. Bro, look at this. Um, Alan. One, two, glimpse three here. Um, Bro, this, this deck is ripped out. Okay, let's take these. Um, I'm going to reveal. Unfortunately, it's not a harmony or melody. And so I'll recollect, and I will draw for turn here. I don't get the rule with like mat sleeves. You should be able to um, do anything you want with mat deck. I'll pay one, two, and three. I'll drop another capricious links. I will attempt to swing at Gildas for three. Holy crap! Yep, sounds good. Bro, I'm I'll getting absolutely silvy, dude. Yep, sounds good. And I will pass my turn with one card in hand. Bro, I am getting mega silly. Oh, wow. I have to level up here. Like, I just don't have any other good options. But then that's going to make some other plays really awkward. Bro, jeez. Happening here. What is happening here? All right, I'll level up into Lorraine. Um, I'll shuffle and then do one through six and roll a dice. Okay. Future proofing, I think. That makes sense. All right, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Whoa, shoot. All right, new dice. Three. One, two, three. That sucks. I didn't want to get rid of that. Uh, this is just not good. I'll go strapping construct, and then I'll swing two into uh, a lynx, and then after that, I'll swing one into a lynx. Okay. The lynx dies. I'll put two down and go construct, and then I'll pass. Or sorry, shield me, and then I'll pass. Bro, like, I'm 100% losing this Sylvie player, man. Like, he got the drip. He knows what he's doing. He says, check out this Allen, bro. This Allen's beating you with this flute. This is wild. I will recollect. I will draw for turn. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> I guess I should have been going after board. Why, dude? I I, I can't play fire. GCR here. I'm gonna go GCR. for board when it's the wrong time, and I'm gonna go for face when it's the wrong time. With wind, I I get a better read on when I should I'll do. Put three down for probably because I don't have as much here. experience on fire. Plus one, two. Oh, I'll put down this instead. Bedivere is going to let his Lynx kill my um, shield mate, and then uh, his Bedivere is going to kill my Construct, and then I'm left with an empty board, and a uh, pretty sad time. And then um, I'll go ahead and pay one to do another Chilling Touch. Uh, if you would like to please roll.
uh, banish a creative shock per turn. Okay. Um... Yeah, if you have Renin. This list only plays two. It's... it's... Uh, I was really scared about how many water decks would be coming out and like the fracturized lantern thing. And only Isaac did that against me. Sylvie players just don't have time, I don't think. Pass there, sir. Your card's in hand. Sounds good. Uh, why did he pass? Why did he pass? Why did he pass? What can I do about that? So his Bedivere is a 1-4, and then it is going to give the Lynx a buff counter. But uh, we just have to kill it. Um, I think I can wait for a Flame Sweep to go into level 2. Can I? No, I can't. I just have to go into level two. Do I? No. Sorry, guys. Fine. Here's. Yes. All right. Oh, Crystal of Empowerment, Ray Collector off. Yep. I have no no fire and tropics out outside of the. Um, Flammering Swordsman, which is crazy. Uh, oh, yeah. Bad. I'm just going to play uh, another Shield Mate, and uh, I'm going to pass my turn. Creative Shock comes back. Go ahead. Okay. That's uh, three cards in memory, one card in hand, correct? Yes. Never had two shield made out at the same time. Couldn't really swing with the construct there because of the better we are having taunt. Let me collect and I'll draw for turn here. And I almost wonder if I should have gone into adversity instead of crystal of empowerment because it's okay. very likely that I go into turn two next or level two next turn. Fire but... resonance bubbles. For turn. Yeah, he might just not want to give me floating because right now I'm not really representing being able to go into level 2 and sweep One, unless he does give me floating. Two, um, which is a smart play. Three, but unfortunately, counter. he just doesn't know that. I will choose I'm to banish one of the floatings to give it digging for it. One buff counter and I will draw for that as well. Um, I'll attempt to swing 3 into the stalwart shieldmate. I will attempt to swing three into the stalwart shieldmate. And then I will pay one, two. Um, this scrap, uh, scrapping construct is a two, one. Is that correct? It's a two, one. And then I could pop the crystal to go up levels and make it a three, two. Because this class bonus level two plus is that it gets plus one, plus one. Got it. Understood. Um, I'll go ahead and pay two for a scavenging raccoon. And I would like Ooh. to choose to target the two stalwart shieldmates. This guy is insane, bro. Um, I will and it's foil. Into the scrapping conscript for one. All deflecting. Um, and I will pass my turn with zero cards in hand. I'm going to go Ornamental, give Strapping a buff counter for the turn. Or sorry, a, a plus one attack for the turn. Yes. I'm going to pop Crystal um, and then swing Construct for four into Bedivere. Yes. Um, Bedivere will... Um, and it has two life, correct? Uh, uh, correct, correct. Okay, yep, so cannot kill it. Um, 
And then I think you would get your class bonus effect, right? Or sorry, the on death effect. Uh, I am level uh on death, put a buff. Yes. I do I am level four. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Go yep, ahead no put problem. Two here, put one here, and I'll put one. Is Bedivere buff counter on allies or animals and beasts? Oh, let's see. It says put a buff count on each animal or beast ally. You okay. Control. Sorry about that. Oh, no, you're just, you're all good. This will go back to one here. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um. Okay, and then. Yeah, I mean this is bad. I'll put down a scrapping construct. Swing three into the uh, capricious links, and then swing one with ornamental to kill it off. And then I'll pass. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so the game's probably just over, honestly. Down to one, one life, correct? Yep, two ones. Two ones. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah. Second gives you foiling and rest his cast. So if you love it too, you have to cleave. You can wipe his war. Not gonna. Yeah. yeah. It's a foil. It's a rip right there. He downloaded you. Yeah, love these turns. Thank you, Yeti Squad. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, we fixed the Frost uh, Sworn buff. Dude, honestly, like, he's just been... He's just been playing me this whole game, man. Like, what happened, dude? How did how did Water get this good? Like, it's not like he's played Scepter of Lumina, even. Go ahead and put a Terra Fring down. I'll recollect here. Like, was Water always this I'll good? Did we just ignore it too long? I will pay one. I will pay two. Maybe my deck's just bad. Responder, and I will give the one buff counter to the Scavenging Raccoon. It's got two buff counters on it now. Um, I will attempt to swing at one of the Scrapping Conscripts for three with the Raccoon. Um, I will swing one with the Young Beast Bunder for the Raccoon. Or, excuse me, Young Beast Bunder. Uh, do you retaliate, sir? Uh, it was rested. Oh, it was rested. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, I let Alan commit we'll to board. Pass turn there with three cards in hand. Because I, I lost so many games tonight not going face that I just uh, did some silly things. All right, so. I don't know. I mean, if I clear that raccoon, he's going to be pretty hard to get levels with. But he still has, like, Frostworn Paladin up. How do I clear the raccoon? Raccoon is a three. Uh, I'll go ahead and level up. I'm going to lose the Flame Rune Swordsman, and then uh, I'll go even to odds. Even. That sucks. All right. Uh, recollect. Draw. And then I'll attempt to swing Lorraine for three into the Raccoon. Um, yes, that goes through. Draw a card from effect. Put three down for lurking assailant. Uh, in response to lurking, I'll pay two and frostbite. Yep, sounds good. Go ahead. That dude, this guy just had my number all game. Understand. Oh man, bro, it's all the foils, man. This shiny, uh, shiny cardboard. Imagine Cave and lose a cent to Sylvia Allen. It's gonna happen. What did he manifest? Did it give us levels? Uh he went terrifying. They be spawn ears. No, this guy's also been playing well. I'm not like trying to take anything off the turn. Um, I just made a poor decision to, to finally go face. I will swing three into Lorraine. Well, this is Jeff. I know Jeff. Seven? Yep, take three. I will swing one into Lorraine. Take one. And then I'll pay two to Freezing Hail Lorraine. Ooh, nice. Yep, I'll take two. And then I will pass my turn with two cards in hand. Uh, 
I'll go sort of adversity, uh, recollect draw. Um, the collection, I'll go ahead and banish the tower frame here. Sounds good. I'll pass, go ahead. Respawn pause, I'll restand, recollect, draw for turn. It's just so tricky because, like, you commit board too much against them in the early game, they cleave you, and then it puts a really, really hard damper on your tempo. One moment, sir. Uh, You're good. That's something. Um, and if you don't, then they might just be able to pick you off slowly and board control you. It's like it's like it's actually like almost the same as like Ally Lorraine list versus Ally Lorraine list. It's so odd. Dude. Always asking silly questions and rules help. So cool to see him grow as a player. Awesome. I mean, he seems dedicated, man. He has that bling. No, that's really cool. Go ahead and start off by swinging one into Lorraine. Take one. I hope he whoops my butt, dude. <laughs> Level 3 Allen is just peace bond pause. Yeah, he has a uh, ears underneath it as well. Um, That's fine. Bro, he can hear the stream. Hello. <laughs> I'm just joking. Like a very ally, very ally matchup stuff, though. Yeah. Hey, G. G A is. G A is hard, man. Um. The amount of misplays I made tonight is horrendous. Honestly. Go ahead and. Our decisions here for him, whether or not he wants to swing that paladin. I will pass my turn, sir. Sounds good. So Lorraine gets to actually level up this time. Still don't have any floating memory, I don't think. Yeah, that's rough. Uh, I'll skip materialization and draw. Okay. Oh boy. I think I'm just going to do the no respect on him having lethal, which is probably going to get me killed, but it's, I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to attempt to play Arthur. Pay two, and I'll play Frostbite as well. Go ahead. Well, not much you can do against water when they uh, Frostbind the only oh, thing you play two turn. turns in a row. This is definitely going to be game here. Draw for turn. Hey, in, the, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and scoop this matchup and go on to game two. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I forgot that we were still on game one. Uh, definitely scoop there once I see that next frost bind. Uh, we're gonna roll an ad because I haven't rolled ads all night. So getting late it's uh it's nine on the west coast so gotta be later elsewhere too yeah it's uh midnight right now for me oh gosh <laughs> yeah these these run pretty late um but uh it's all right i'm uh yeah. getting used to it <laughs> yeah are you usually an early sleeper during the week uh, I, I honestly fluctuate. Um, so I, I run my own business and I, I'm trying to play card games competitively, like for a living. So I've just, I just adapt to what is happening. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the, the Australians were doing all these like super late night tournaments, uh, for a while on like TTS and stuff where I was like, like staying up to like 4am and yeah, normally I'm not like that type of person, but, uh, just, uh, yeah, just adapt my sleep schedule when I need to. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome to hear, man. More power to you, dude. Um, Thank you. Yeah, 
I love hearing anytime people pursue what they want, you know, take that leap of faith and just go all in. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'll do a couple more shuffles. I'll put one card in my side deck and then I'll be good to go here. Sounds good. Um, I will have you go first, by the way. Yes. Okay. So take this out. We'll put this in. Um, this one over here. We'll do two more shuffles and then we'll do a cut and we'll be good to go. All right, guys, we got to make up for earlier. I'm sorry. Going to hit you with another ad. I'm so sorry. Go ahead and cut it half. Where's the stream chat? There stop. it is. All right, good luck. Good luck. I don't remember if I cut or not, but there we go. Spirit of water. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm immune to this wicked spell. <laughs> how many cards are in his deck? Based on how he's shuffling, I think his deck is triple sleeved. Oh, sure. Yeah, could be. If I get a Star Wars shield mate. Shield mate's a good open. And we'll go ahead and pass turn there. Four cards in hand. Sounds good. I'll go fire, draw it. Wow, I definitely got the go first hand. Whoops. This is kind of wild, actually. Um... Yeah, we're just going to go one, two, three, four. I'll attempt to play Arthur, uh, and then if there's no response, I'll rest him from Immortality, and I'll pass the turn. Well, let's see here. We'll go ahead and Sylvie to level one, if you would like to choose one to banish, please. Uh, we'll go closest to your Material deck. Closest to the Material deck. Let me banish a Grey Wolf. Seventy foils, I would think he would be at least oh, doubled. Yeah. CSRs and penny sleeves are no balls. <laughs> All those foils definitely want to keep him safe, yeah. I uh played single sleeved with my Banner Knight Ambassador promo and my guild of CSRs and all that stuff. I just fear no man. Go ahead and a should probably double sleeve my material deck. Two for a gray wolf. And I'll give it one buff counter, and Sounds I will pass my, pass my turn with three cards in hand. I'll go ahead and level one. Uh, one through four, I'll just reroll on five and six. Okay. All right, got rid of a hone. That's... Fine, I had two in hand, which is why I'm going to level one, honestly. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and hone by fire on this sort of seeking. Uh, any response? Um, this is pre recollection, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, and that gives it plus two damage. And um, a durability counter. And a durability, okay. Um, seeing that you would have five cards in memory left. Um, Correct. Yep. And then I get my draw. Yep. Uh, I'll uh, hone a fire results. I have all four Arthurs on turn two. Half my hand is Arthurs. Bruh. It's the problem of playing eight unique allies, I guess. I've been ripped on uh, Gildas' and Arthurs. Um, okay. We'll swing two into the Star Wars Shieldmate. And how many cards in hand? Three cards in hand. I'll attempt to swing three into the Grey Wolf. Yep, 
Um, and the Grey Wolf dies and it retaliates. Sounds good. Well, some crazy part of me wants to play a new Arthur Immortal. I'm like really thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it. That's so bad though, isn't it? That's so bad. I can't do that. That's terrible. I can't do that. I'll play Gildas and I'll swing at you for two. Okay. Go ahead. Two. Okay. So bad. I can't believe I considered doing that. Go ahead and get the true CR out. Collect. Drop the turn. Grab true CR here. Drop true CR. That would be pretty funny. Yeah, you're not wrong. I, I'm i sure my opponent would be confused. <laughs> I'll put Capricious Lynx down, and I'll attempt to Please swing kill Arthur, Arthur for three damage. Nice. Sounds good. He dies. Not like a wrong decision by him or anything, just lucky for me. I think killing Arthur no, or Gildas there is, like, either one could be argued. Go ahead and materialize ring, uh, recollect, and draw. Awkward thing is, I don't actually, I actually don't have a way to balance kill this unless I create a shock here. Um, I could pop ring and hope to draw into the three drop, but uh, I'm actually gonna just do this so I can get rid of one Arthur. I guess I could also play Arthur, swing it, and build this into Lynx. But, um... Yeah, actually, okay, I'll do that. Uh, I'm going to pop ring and draw. Yes. So if I do a three drop there, it's a much better turn as well. And if I didn't, like I didn't, I will just... I'll uh, play Arthur, and then I'll swing two into Lynx. And then Gildas would be able to do two again. Um, we'll do the finish two. Okay. Um, Four Arthurs by turn two. I had a six card hand, and three of them were Arthurs after playing one. Crazy. One moment, sir. Take your time. Um, Also, mini update, we put every single okay, thing... Okay, so the two damage will go through to Capricious Lynx. Sounds good. I will then attempt to kill it with Gildas. Um, I'll go ahead and pay two for a Song of Nurturing to give it two life. So I think it has two life. So left. It has five, I five. believe? Yes, five. Yep. Okay, and it's taken four. Um, yes. Okay, I will kill it with Lorraine. Then I will pass. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead now. We put every single thing on the... Move to Fire Resonance Bubble. We collect. Draw the turn. Okay, how do I do that? Crack the Fire Resonance Bubble. Draw the Fire Resonance Bubble. Uh... Is there a bit where 
You run cremation. I haven't seen you play or discard any games. Uh, I cut it because we want a ton of allies on our board. Like this is more of an ally fire aggro deck. Um, but I'm not sure if this build is optimized. I I mean I I I am sure this build is not optimized. Go ahead and pay two for a stalwart shield knight. Wait, is chat not showing? Oh, do we not have chat showing up. Oh, we don't, do we? That's fine. I don't have my turn against there, Spyfall on one two zero. I feel bad. Felt bad. Game feel bad. Every out. What's, what's what am I doing over here? Um, probably can draw, I guess. I'll go water bobble, uh, recollect and draw. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. I still don't have a way to keep balance build this. That's so awkward. Um, I'll swing Arthur into, uh, this shield mate. Play Creative Shock, draw two. Um, At three in hand. Yeah, um, just give me one moment. Sorry, just checking something. Yeah, of course. Oh, no, I can't. I can't balance go this. I could if I waste a Deflecting Edge. Um, but I don't think that's worth getting three extra damage. Okay. Yeah, resolve, sir. Uh, discard an Arthur. A pop water bobble. Draw a card. Yes. I like that. Let's swing two with Gildas. Okay. One, two. I'll play Stalwart Shield Me. Yep. I'm actually going to swing one with her. Okay. Go ahead. Flame sweat twice and I frostbite it every time. Yeah, here. and you have like Trapper uh, too. Like it's crazy. Here, and I'll go ahead and glimpse three. Dude, like I'm so excited for regional season. It's gonna be so interesting to see uh, what people play and how things work. It really does feel like water beats fire now. I think it was always kind of supposed to, but I never felt like it was. Uh, I mean, it, it didn't. Like, like the results pre-ascent showed that. And it really does feel like water actually beats fire now. Doesn't she deal two? Didn't she? Oh, no, no, no. Shieldmate? No, it's only getting one attack from Arthur. So I'll put these two on the bottom. He's on the top. Wait, neither player has no, the same life hell. tool. Yeah, wait. Cannot no, I draw. swung Gildas Cannot. for two, I think. Take that, I'll recollect, and I will draw for turn. Uh, I have myself at three and you at three, but I see you have one person at five. Oh. Because um, I, I, I took um, Grey Wolf damage at one point. Yeah, I, I just misclicked that. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and change that to three, three. Okay. Thanks for cool. calling it out. Yeah, no worries. I could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm right. I think I've been. Why would he be at five? I, I don't. I don't think I missed a two damage swing. 
Who knows? Okay. Does Arthur always give plus one attack or while attacking? So, so Arthur is a, a static Arthur? plus one attack. No, it is not like Phalanx. Phalanx attacks. captain usually. Arthur? Yep, sounds good. He takes one. Phalanx and captain only gives it when they attack. And I'll play Freezing Hail on Arthur. Yo, that's so good. That gets rid of my. Uh, that gets. I will. Yep, he dies. Uh, deflecting card. edge cannot stop that, but I have another one, so it's all right. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go tariff ring, recollect draw. Yes. I'll play Arthur. Um, I'm gonna go two into the hairs. Mm -hmm. And I'll go one into the hairs. Okay, hairs dice. I'll go two into you with Gildas. Yes. And I'll... Cards in hand and memory? Uh, four. Uh, and then how many floating memory and drop? One. I'm going to Savage Slash for two, not using the sword. Okay. And then I'll pass. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm just going to pop Terrifying here and just go for, like, absolute tempo. Because okay, he's not going to be able to be so frenzy me. Collection. Yep, I'll do Terrifying. And then if he does this turn. play where he's going to just take a defensive turn, then I have a ton of deflectings in hand. Um, and that's the turn I sit on deflectings instead of sitting on them right now. Uh, Savage Slash is going to let me get tempo and then also like uh, go into something like a Drawn Blade or something like that. Yeah, that is an important... No, by the way, Arthur does have to be rested. Uh, I could also go. I think I like going into smoke bombs better than I like going into drawn blade. Yeah, I like that a lot actually. I think Alan's twenty two health. Um, probably don't. I mean, like unless I draw like a running flames, don't really think I can kill him. That Play three here for a bed of here, and I'll pay one for a chilling touch. Uh, one through six. Yep. Savage slash. Okay. Um, and I will. I could do three attacks next turn if I really wanted to. Swing one on to the ring. Oh, interesting. Sounds good. Oh, Take it. Ring. Actually, tariff ring. Sorry about that. Oh, yep, you're right. No, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. Uh, I will pass my turn here. Okay, so he's probably going to pop his tariff ring. Means that we won't get that many attacks in. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to go banish the floating memory for smoke bombs and then move to recollection. Yep, I'll banish tariff ring here as well. Sounds good. Recollection draw. Yeah, I'm really okay with this. Um, I could kill Bedivere, but it's going to be very hard. Not very hard. Um, I'll pay two for Arthur to make an attack into Bedivere. Two. And then I'll pay two for Gildas to make an attack into Bedivere. Okay, Bedivere dies. And then I'll pass my turn. Savage Slash coming back. And I'll pass. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and put out Orb of Glitter. Uh, banish Chilling Touch. I'll be collect. Or a glitter. Okay. That's interesting. Or I'll glimpse rather. Sorry, I'll glimpse one here. Um, I'll draw for that. Uh, but rating? Did you give Terra Ring? I don't remember. We uh, probably should have switched Peaceful I... and Terra Ring ratings though. I know we went very positive on Peaceful, and it has not impacted much. 
Um, yeah. Sheriff's odd because like. Go ahead and banish all the glitter here. Draw from the hand. The thing is, if everyone runs Tariff, it kind of makes Tariff a worse card. Tariff's good when some people are running it and some aren't. Does that make sense? I think it does. Go ahead and pay one to do sticking shot on Arthur for attempt to swing for four. Uh, I do have a stalwart out. Do you want to oh, still do, do that? Oh, sorry. Did not see that. And that has two. Yeah, you're all good. I'll take that back. Thank you. Um, Dude, I am very impressed by this player. This guy is sideboarding, uh, seeking shots. I'll go ahead I love that. that. Sounds good. Bro, this guy is the MVP. Uh, I'll terrifying this turn, so I uh, will go ornamental, buff the Arthur by one. Yes. Recollect and draw. Uh, swing three with Arthur. Yes. Ally takes three. Terrible. Swing two with Gildas. Two. I'll go Savage Slash with my Greatsword for three. Three, two, three. I'll go Tempered Steel, giving Sword Seeking another durability counter, and then I'm gonna pass my turn, go ahead. Well, my hand is two Gildas, Close three deflecting here. something else, a flame sweep. Um, it's like fine. It's just annoying because I want to end this game faster and get onto a game three. Oh, so it's not another draw. But I just like I literally just cannot. Tithe here. Pay one. Tithe. Okay. Floating. I will draw for tithe, and then I will draw for turn. But I probably level up since I have two floating now. And uh, sweep, maybe, because I just don't even really have allies like outside of another Gildas that I can play. Or actually, no, I probably level up, swing my board, play Gildas, replace the other one. I thought about that this turn, too, but... He pulled that out on me, too. That's funny. One for a seeking shot onto Arthur. Attempt to swing for four. Uh, I'll deflect in so it only takes one. Okay. And... I could also smoke bombs here, but... I don't know why I'm not. I will pass my turn, sir. All right, we have three floating, so... Uh, let's go Drawn Blade. Uh, I'll go Drawn Blade. Draw a card. Recollect and draw. Swing two into champion. Yep, ally takes two. One, two. Play Construct. Um, yep. Then I'll swing three into champion. One, two, three. I'll blazing throw my drawn blade away for four. Yep, and that's that should be game here. Okay, good game, man. Awesome, good game. I was gonna go smoke bombs, draw, and then Gildas is balanced there. Just in case he had interaction.
I like, remember I playing in... against you last week. I think you were playing uh, a win Merlin at the time. I was, oh. yeah. I like how you're playing different decks, just getting, you know, trying out different stuff. That's pretty cool. So um, I've I've really like stuck myself on wind for a while now. I really like how that color plays, but it's um, it's making me play other colors a lot worse so yeah i'm trying to force myself mm -hmm. to practice because like i literally find myself playing this like a wind deck you know like not yeah. not aggressive enough and stuff that's yeah funny if i if i remember correctly i don't think you ran avarice in that wind deck anyway so it's interesting that you moved off of it but to your point you're probably like just looking to get more overall practice and be more well-rounded yeah basically my thought process was um i did have avarice in there but it was like uh, it wasn't like built into the deck if that makes sense um like it wasn't really the thing i was going for but if i happened to have a chance to abuse it why not since it's still legal um but yeah it was definitely built with the idea of like if avarice gets hit because i thought it would then i can just take it out and the deck's basically the same yep that makes sense yeah seeking shot is true sight dude thank you for reminding me that would be embarrassing um Dude, I like. I just feel like my card knowledge is okay, so, so bad this now. Is the last game of the night. So, do a couple more shuffles and enjoy it, and then we'll go on our way. Yep, sounds good. Uh, do you want to go first or second? Um, I'm gonna run an go ad first. real quick, guys, just before we start the last game. Bro, please. Here we go. Oh, was he the water Sylvie player at uh, California Regionals? I think I heard about that. Um, just about ready here. I will do a trust cut and we'll go from there. Cut it in half. I don't remember if I cut or not, so do you want me to cut? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Thank you. I, I couldn't remember, so all right. Good luck, man. Good luck. Ooh. Yeah, what is it? Level two yeah. is true sight, or is it level one or something like that? Water. These are actually pretty relevant. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Level two, yeah. Trust I put him two down. Let's put the solid shield mate down. Oh, same opening. Oh, two. more. Um, I'll put an ordinary bear down. Uh, okay. We'll All right. We got some board to deal with. Got some board to deal with. All right. Well, this is probably the play. I'll go hasty, swing at the yep. stalwart on attack discard. Yep. I'll go hasty, swing at stalwart on attack discard. Yep, and the stalwart dies. And I'll pass, go ahead. So okay. we had two floating um, no matter what. I drew into another tempered steel though, so I discarded the tempered steel we'll over the stalwart. And now we're stalwart and paying so uh, and now we're sitting on two hasties um, and a deflecting edge in hand. So actually a pretty good level two or turn one going second for us here. Um, really just going to set up as many floating memory in the drop as we need one. and uh, still fight for board presence. I'll play a scavenging raccoon and I would like to eat the two steals. Dude, I should. Uh, attempt to swing at hasty for two. Oh, evil. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to deflect an edge. Okay, got it. Um... I am just getting absolutely wrecked, bro. Vin's donating that $2 out of, out of sympathy, man. How's it going, Vin? Thank you for the donation, man. <laughs> the spoilers today were amazing. Amazing. So oh, much, like, 
too. Looking forward to that. A smack with Flute. Um, oh my god. And Can attempt I... to swing at one for the hasty with the one HP. Uh, okay, so right now the hasties are both at two HP, and oh, then there's two. one there's one more being prevented on one of them. So I'll I'll put I'll put a red counter off of this card. That's gonna signify okay. this one will take one less damage. Okay. If you need to take back the smack by flute play, you can, oh. but I think you should still be fine. Okay, so the, just to recap, the one hasty has two, and then the one hasty has three. Is that correct? Essentially, yes. Okay, got it. That raccoon um, was so rough, dude. That was that was a, not that was not a scavenger. That was a berserker, dude. Uh, he just came in and, swinging. Uh, yeah, I'll still go ahead and do that, and I will attack the one with. Uh, Ooh, let's see. Well, it's all the same. I can only kill one, so... Yeah, you can go, like, one face and then clear the other one. Or, again, yeah. if you do want to take back that play, that's okay, too. Um, could I do anything different? Let's see. It's I late. Paid, so this was a long day. And I paid These matches don't matter. Do that, right? so, um, More than fine letting him take back some stuff right now here. Yeah, the the level threes are going to be oh, super interesting to see. What am I doing? Uh, You're all good. Three. Um, so one and then three. Oh gosh. One and then three. Um, hasty messenger. Let's see what this stuff does. There's our turn one. Ooh, yeah. So if he attacks, I don't like that. But the Omnidex. What do you mean? Hey, yo, Fuji. Thank you so much, man. You know what, sir? Y'all are epic. Just, uh, I'll continue doing that, and I'll attack the Hasty with two here, and then the remaining one damage, I'll just go into face here. Yep, sounds good. And I will pass my turn with no cards in hand. I think we just go G-Star here. I'll go GCR recollect draw. Thank you so much, Fuji. Yeah, I think we'll get theme deck level threes and set level threes. Uh, banish GCR draw one. So I've got some different options here. I'm not really sure what I want to do. I got a clear board. That's for sure got to happen. Like, absolutely. So how do I do that? Like they're both there. There's a two health and a um, scavenger raccoon is a two two and bear is two three right now, right? Yes. Okay. So my best option probably three and two. Yeah, I can, I can clear board. Okay. Um, we'll swing hasty into. Uh, bear. Mm -hmm. Discard a shield mate on attack. Draw one. Mm -hmm. Play lurking assailment. Kill the bear off. Yes. Play construct. Kill the raccoon. Yep. And I'll pass turn. Go ahead. Not like exactly how I'd like that turn to go, but um, we get a floating memory in our grave for free to finally maybe go into that level one for free. Uh, cleared board, which was the most important thing that turn, but it does put two floating memory in his drop, and it puts a one health ally on our side of the board, which means that that's certainly going to die. So, um... Oh, but the Omni decks don't win this matter in the Omni decks. Yeah, you're right. And, uh, you know, yeah. I'm tanking my elo tonight. Oh no. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate everyone that's donated tonight. We had three different donations. Thank you guys so much. Um, really, really kind of you guys. Isaac, I I literally didn't run ads for the first four hours of the stream. <laughs> I'm so bad at remembering that. We collect. Ooh, this is. I will. I don't really get the orb of glitter. Glimpse one. Um, I'll draw that. Here. 
but maybe it's just helping bring consistency to his deck, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm playing Lorraine Ally Fire Aggro. Uh, it was the most Go ahead and banish the voted fire. deck. Draw one more. Most voted deck when I asked in our Discord what I should play tonight. A1, A2, A3. For also, uh, ooh. I'll go ahead and banish one floating. Give it one buff counter, and I will draw pretty good. that as well. And then um, I will attempt to swing three into the uh, lurking. Um, the lurking here. Yep, the lurking. And um, I will. Time and round, by the way. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a heads up, that's time and round, so you'll be turn zero. Okay, got it. Orb is really strong in decks like Water Xander. Wouldn't have thought to put it in a more aggro deck like Sylvie. Yeah, that's kind of what, like, I think, I think, I think it's... I'll go ahead and pay one, and I'll play Seeking Shot, and I'll attempt oh, shoot. to shoot for a Hasty Messenger. Sounds good. And I'll pass my turn. The thing is, he only has one turn after this, so it's almost guaranteed he can't um, kill me. And so I've got to go as aggressive as I possibly can, I think, to try to kill him in two turns, which seems very unreasonable. Um, banish Stalwart, go level one, sort of seeking, recollect and draw. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really don't know how I do that. I'm gonna, just going to play quickly. I'll play Arthur. Um, we're going to... That's yeah, not... Um, you have how many cards in hand? One card in hand. Swing two into you, and then I'll swing three into the Frostworn, and I'll swing one into the Frostworn. Okay. Two. And I'll pass. Go ahead. Okay. So, so this is your last turn, and then I'll have one more turn, or if five minutes goes up, that's it, too. Okay, so um, so just the rulings. So this is my this is my last turn. Yes. And, so when and... when time is called, uh, yeah. turn zero begins. Yeah. Okay. And then it's one, two, and then three. It's an immediate draw. Oh, I see. Okay. So essentially, you have to kill me this next turn. Two turns Correct. Now. Otherwise, it's a draw. Oh, that's yep. interesting. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, wait, um, you didn't say next okay. turn or? Uh, uh, so... sorry. I I also only get one turn. We we both have one additional one turn. turn. Yep. So yep. you you will have your turn and then me and then it's over. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that's no fun. Can't yeah. I mean, out. if he if he kills any of my board, play not to lose. I think that's what it. But I do to. have um double um, banner knight, crystal empowerment, Arthur. Like I could get a lot of Arthur's damage if he doesn't do anything. It but it is what it is. Um. Okay. So I think it's I, unlikely either one of us close it out that, because that that will change my. I'm not just gonna go toe to toe here. I'll play to yeah. live here. So, so thank you. Appreciate that. I no worries. Being said, I, I will play Tower Frank here. So let's Good yeah. Time. And and with that, we can just call it a draw. I can't I can't get yeah. through Tower Frank. I I like so, maybe would have been able to do something if you did nothing defensive and also didn't kill my board. But uh, yeah, I think even then, 17 damage is a pretty big True. stretch. True. All right. Well, that was that was fun. I think we were just kind of like duking it out back and forth. So. Yeah, that was a really really excellent match, man. Um, big props to you, dude. That was a really really uh really good match, and uh, I like all the foils. Very very nice. <laughs> thank thank you. Again, they're one foil at a time, just trading at the local card game store, and yeah, fun. But yeah, thanks for the games, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have a good night, dude. Good See you in the next one. Take care. I'm waiting. Uh, let's run an ad while I clean up since we just really did so poorly on that earlier. And then uh, we'll say some final words and close out the stream. Okay. Um,
You won your match? I did. Yeah, so 3-0-1. Yeah. Well, oh, nice. Not bad. Wind, uh, water, or water allies showing up strong. It, it didn't stop. Yeah, that last one was with Bifall, and he was on fire. Uh, they, they were aggressive, really aggressive. Hmm, okay. Uh, less allies. And the game one, it was close. And the game two, I had, I didn't go into it one, but turn two into fractal nullifying. Hmm. And then I uh, had Frostbind, Frostbind, Frostbind. Yeah. Oh, the the cool thing about you running water is that you get to use these fancy new fracturized yeah, tokens that yeah. might be hitting. Oh man, that lighting is just the so terrible. The lighting's horrible, and oh, wait. Ooh, look at those. And not in focus. That's mainly focus. Oh, oh there we go. Shoot, baby. There oh, is. there we go. That fracturized token from yeah. True Champion Gaming. <laughs> uh, probably will be having those uh, hit the merch store soon. Be giving away a ton of them too at the at the events. We'll probably sell them yeah. like for like a dollar online, yeah, yeah. Um, just to cover like the Shipping cost costs. of making them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, if you if you're gonna keep doing push to talk cave, you should get like a peddler to push to talk <laughs> yeah. while playing. Yeah, that would be definitely really handy. You know, we're we're still grassroots right now. Um, oh, that really zoomed up close on my face, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we got in there. <laughs> but yeah, so we're still like trying to figure out like the streams and everything like that, the, the setups and everything, but definitely a good idea. Um, you should do more of these streams are so good. We are making it a weekly occurrence. So Terry, Isaac, or me will be streaming every single Thursday doing the Yeti run. Just one of us though. Um, probably by default, it'll be most of the time. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, Isaac says he doesn't want to do them. Um, but uh i went well yeah and, isaac uh, isaac did 301 301 yeah first game with a tie against water allies and played against uh jeff just there and barely I, it was a close game for his guys too the, the, the secret stuff was, i played against yeah double fire yeah and then they like, um but yeah it's almost 1 a.m here guys and i still have to go home so we are going to end the stream here thank you guys so much for joining we had uh a, like yeah a pretty good amount of viewers the right. whole time um especially since so many people are in yeti as yeah, well yeah. you know <laughs> so um awesome to have as much support as we did uh thank you guys to thank you guys so much for donating uh i saw a lot of new members join the discord as well i haven't checked to see if we got any new patreons but um yeah, I mean, like, just so much support as always. Uh, it's we we saw a lot of growth in our Discord members, Patreons, uh, website orders, and yeah. um, uh, subscribers on YouTube from that twenty four hour stream that we did. So really, really want to just appreciate everyone for helping us grow so much and uh, becoming these full time content creators for GA because we just love the game so much. There's a ton of passion. So peace out, guys. We'll see you next week.